Anybody want to speak about the one on one time? We're ready to go, guys. <laughs> we'll call this meeting to order. Uh, I apologize for being a few minutes late. I got behind a gentleman in a, <laughs> a pickup truck and he was Sunday driving and I counted four cigarettes he tossed on, on Buck Creek all the way down. So he, he wasn't in too much of a hurry. He did get up to 25 twice, but he didn't, he didn't feel like he needed to pull over either. So I didn't, I didn't have one of those red lights to put on top of the car or anything, so I had to make do. I appreciate your indulgence. Uh, we'd like to call this meeting to order. Um, the first thing uh, we would like to do tonight, uh, a few announcements. Uh, the first thing we would certainly like to uh, recognize uh, Commissioner Bill's election as the second vice president of the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. Quite an honor. Uh, it's been a long time since we've uh, had some representation, especially from Macon County. Uh, Miles Gregory uh, served as a, a president of that association. How long ago did that run? So, almost 30 years. So, uh, we're very proud of uh, Ronnie for putting himself up, and uh, he won quite convincingly, and uh, he'll do a great job, and it's, it's always good to get some representation. Uh, we're, and, and Ronnie's pretty good at squalling, so uh, he, he can uh, make a noise when he needs to. So, Ronnie, thank you for being willing to do that, and, and we will very much avail ourselves of, of your contacts. There. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll just say that, first of all, I'd like to thank the, the people of Macon County, the citizens of Macon County, for giving me the opportunity. Without serving here, I wouldn't be having an opportunity to serve on that position, but there was nobody in that line this side of Guilford County. So I appreciate the support of my colleagues up here and the citizens of Macon County and, uh, and the commissioners across the state. Uh, and a lot of them face the same issues that we do. So we look forward to working with them. And, uh, and if it benefits Macon County, we feel it benefit other places too. But uh, Macon County is what matters. That's what we're going to be working on. So thank you so much. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, next, we'd like to, uh, if we could, uh, we'd ask uh, Commissioner Corbin to uh, give us our invocation. Okay. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we're so thankful tonight to, uh, to be here together in this room. God, we thank you for this beautiful county we live in. We thank you for all of us who, uh, who care so much about it. God, I thank you for uh, this opportunity for us to serve. And uh, Lord, as we take a look at all the issues that we face throughout the weeks and months. We ask your divine hand of guidance on us as we uh, endeavor to do our best. God, we pray in your holy name. Amen. 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 Uh, before we do uh, recite the pledge, uh, we would just like to remember this past weekend, 9-11, all the things. I'm sure a lot of people participated in different things. And just remember all the people uh, that perished in that and also all that's gone on in the past 10 years. and. And especially all the volunteers, firefighters, policemen, all those that, that uh, directly participated when that happened. And then in the 10 years since, all of our military has continued to work to keep us safe. And we'll uh, keep them in remembrance also. If we return to the face of the flag, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. <laughs> we do have uh, two uh, public hearings. Uh, the first one uh, we'll go ahead and commence with. That's on the 911 road names. <coughs> You'd like to come forward and share with us? Hi, how are you? Good. Our roads have all been posted and uh, advertised as required by the North Carolina General Statutes, and I don't think that we have anybody to speak against any of them. We don't? No. Okay. If we, if we don't have anyone to speak, we can close that hearing. Then. Is that correct? No one's I, I have prepared the proposed ordinance and uh, it should be in your it's pile uh, to be dealt with later in the agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll close the public hearing. 
Uh, we do have a, another public hearing scheduled for 6.30, but with, uh, if, with everyone's agreement, if we just go to the public comment period uh, before then, if we only have one person that wants to speak, is that agreeable to everyone? That's fine. Okay. Uh, so on our uh, uh, public session, we have one person to speak, Mr. Mark Hurstick, and he wants to speak about land slope, I think, or something like that. Exactly. Along I know a few of you here, I've spoken to a few of you on the telephone. Uh, I've dealt with Matt, his boss. Are you uh, his boss? Um, Jack Morgan? Are you uh, in the... Uh, you think about Jack Morgan. Oh, Jack Morgan, that's right. There he is. Anyway, I was thrusted into this uh, uh, steep slope study because five years ago, Duke Energy went on my property. Uh, there was a man named Bruce Dills, who was their forestry expert. I don't know what a forestry expert exactly is. He sprayed an area that crossed over Goldmine Road. That season, we had Hurricane Ivan. The road came down, Goldmine Road came down on my driveway. I was stuck in my house for three days and three nights. No water, no electricity, no phone service. Six people died below me in Peaks Creek. And I've been fighting with Duke Energy and with the uh, different government offices uh, since. This year, because Duke Energy is on a five year cycle, they came to my house. They resprayed the area that came down, which is nothing but a bunch of rocks. It's just piled rocks that are inside a cage going up about uh, 50, 60 feet or 100 feet, maybe 100, 100 feet wide. They even sprayed the rocks, which had little tiny weeds growing out of it. They brush cutted everything on my property and they uh, sprayed herbicide. Uh, what happened is, I have a house watch. My house watch lady sent me an email and she said, uh, Mark, you're going to notice when you go up your driveway, your driveway is starting to come down on both sides, above you and below you. I got here, I immediately called up Duke Energy. I got in touch with a man named Jackie Mashburn who is the new forestry specialist. He said, uh, I asked him about um, spraying herbicide. He said, uh, by law, if, he, if Duke Energy gives a, uh, a flyer on your mailbox, my mailbox is about three football fields away from my house, so I would have never seen it anyway, or possibly it would have been blown away in the winter. But that's all the notice they have to give. And then they come and denude your property. Uh, I would have thought that somebody would have seen the damage right in front of them would not have taken a parcel of land contiguous to that property, cut and spray again. Well. What's the definition of a, uh, an insanity? You just keep, it, keep doing it over and over again and you're expecting uh, different results, but you get the same results. So naturally, the hillside's coming down. Fortunately, we didn't get double-digit rain, but I got involved with the study because I started calling public officials, federal officials. I started with Matt Mason, uh, I went on, I called, I spoke to the Department of Justice, Roy Cooper. I spoke to Ken Rudo, the Department of um, uh, Herbicide Control. I spoke to the um, Water and Soil Natural Resources. I called Water Quality Control. I called Environmental <coughs> Epidermial. I called toxicology. I called Division of Land Resources. 
uh, Section Chief uh, Mel Nevels. I spoke to Wayne Watkins, an engineer, to see if he could take soil studies, which he said are very expensive and you'd have to know exactly what is sprayed. Uh, I called the Public Utility Commission, which has absolutely no teeth and no oversight. They can, you call them, you speak to them, they speak to Duke Energy, Duke Energy says no, and they call you back and say Duke Energy says no. So that's our, that's what we have there. I called Water Quality, Division of Natural Resources, um, the Macon County Health Department. I called um, the Courthouse. I know I spoke to Jack Horton, I spoke to you for something. I don't know if it was, uh, I think I even spoke to you also. And uh, nobody seems to have the teeth to enforce any uh, work that is done that can cause landslides. There are state laws that protect us, but Duke Energy says, now it's not right, but they say we're not building anything, we're just maintaining our power lines. So by saying they're maintaining their power lines, there is no rule and regulation on the books to um, what they cut. They don't have to do any selective pruning. There's many counties in this state um, that have selective pruning ordinances. Uh, they can cause sediment to run down right into Goldmine Creek which justly goes right into, um, you know, Gantes Gulch, goes right into the Colossage River. No laws against that. Mark, where's your house at from Gantes Gulch? Are you going up the road? I'm, the I have a right of way on Gantes Gulch. I have a small parcel of land that leads to the river with a pond, and then, but I enter and exit my home. My ingress and egress is the second uh, driveway above Gantes above Ganthea's Gulch. I spoke to uh, Steve Buchanan, an engineer. I spoke to uh, Judy Cameron in the public utility sector. I spoke to a number of people, and this is where you're not going to like me. Everybody that I spoke to from Asheville East said, what county are you from? When I told them my problem and I mailed them all my I said, Macon County. They either laughed, they said, you got a group of people that have a, um, a vendetta against uh, environmentalists. Now these are, I'll swear to God, almost every person I spoke to, you could hear the sigh when you say Macon County. Even the people with the herbicide spraying. Now, I was able to get somewhere with Duke Energy through their own laws. But again, what they're doing is they're using the fact that they're maintaining a property, maintaining their property to break every law that's on the books. Matt Mason says, I can't do anything about it. His boss couldn't do anything about it. So what you have done, being the polit I, I, I'm assuming you're politicians. You you know me. I'm Mark Kerstick. You are commissioners, so I assume you're politicians. I assume you ran for office. You have some sort of money that's funded to you, or that you get, and you get elected just like any. Politician, am I correct? All right, so you're politicians. Okay. So basically, if the laws are not in the books to protect us, it's because you want it that way. If if uh, if a big company can do what they do, and all I ask you to do is Google Duke Energy <coughs> destroyed my property. Google it. Thank you. And see how many thousands of hits you'll get. And when I asked. Jackie Mashburn, uh, can't you do a few little things just so you don't hurt?
hurt homeowners and you don't hurt property. He says those little things add up to the bottom line. So for all you commissioners that have undecided on this slope study and to all you people who have voted against the slope study, you are, this is what you are getting. You're getting exactly what you wish for. You're, you're getting no oversight. We got monopolies. They're going to come in. They're going to raise our rates. This is a company. You know their profit situation. I think they went up, uh, they doubled their earnings from 2009. I think their earnings went up 20% from 2009 to 2010. But they needed a price increase. They'll ask for 20, everyone will hem and haw, and then they'll get their 10%, which they wanted all along. And you are the, the last line of defense to help us. If you guys don't help us, the other, the other uh, agencies are being totally decimated because, you're probably, because, again, the politicians want it that way. Otherwise, it wouldn't be there. There's nobody to help us. Ronnie, you're in construction. You know what building or clear-cutting. If you remove all vegetation on a 40-degree hillside, completely denude it, I mean, is there anybody here that doesn't believe in the law of gravity or science? It's just it's as simple as that. And, and, and the, the bulk of the work is done already. And the reason why I, I, I found out is because basically I was told, get a geologist on your property. So I spoke to, I think his name is Rick Wooten. He was the guy who did the study. The study is already made. It's not going to cost you anything. There's no big cost factor. It's just rules and regulations and laws that for some reason, they're, they're for the safety of the people. And for some reason, we have people that have ideologies. I don't know if the, I, I, I read the, um, I read the rules uh, of the county commission is you have a code of ethics to be non-partisan, no conflicts of interest, no pledges, you must obey all applicable laws of government, you must be on the side of the public's good, um, not special interest, everything is above board. We're just lucky we didn't have a double digit rainfall, we just got two misses. I would like to know, I hope I'm not stepping on a line, is there anybody here that took a pledge or belongs to an organization that would keep them from doing what's right? Nobody? Nobody has taken a pledge and nobody is uh, in an organization that would do that? I just think that by trying to save money you're perverting the laws in such a way with your lower taxes and, and saving money, you're perverting it in such a way that almost every person told me that the only thing I could do is civil action. File a lawsuit. So what you're doing by not approving this is the only way the citizens, the landowners, can get any recourse is if we sue. So I'm sure, I mean, we're all against having more lawyers, more lawsuits, but yet your actions, that's the only recourse that is left to a landowner and a property owner and a uh, citizen of Macon County. So I want you to think about that. Um, you wanted Macon County to grow, you asked for people like me to come down. I've lived here for 15 years. I've been in the area for 20 years. Um, I'm not a fifth generation person here. I'm not telling you how it's done in New York or New Jersey or, or Florida, but there's certain rules that we have, they're just, 
it's a moral issue. It has nothing to do with even laws. It's just morality. Mm -hmm. Six people died, and people lost tons of money on their property. Because I know I did. I appreciate your time. If you if you got any other comment, no. I know when I'm told to stop. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, our next item, we've got another. Uh, a public hearing on the Macon County Transit Rural Operating Assistance. So I'm, I want to go ahead and open up uh, that uh, public hearing. We do not have anybody scheduled to speak. Uh, Ms. Angus, if you'd like to come up and, and share a few comments with us. Good evening. I know I realize we're in a public hearing, but I do want to take this opportunity once again to thank all of you for your attendance at the uh, Public Transportation Association Board of Directors meeting a couple of weeks ago. The support was, was fantastic. The board members were highly impressed with the local support, and they certainly enjoyed meeting all of you, and I do appreciate that. What I bring tonight is um, the annual rope application. That's the Rural Operating Assistance Program. There's three, three programs funded under this grant application. The Elderly and Disabled Transportation Assistance Program, the Rural General Public Transportation Program, and some employment transportation. Um, we're required to make outreach for um, agencies to be able to apply for the funds. The funds come through the county. The finance <coughs> officer is actually the ultimate county <coughs> official responsible for that. Aren't you glad to know that, Evan? <laughs> um, there's good news and there's bad news. The bad news is, <laughs> for this year, this was, uh, the road funds are 100% state funds. And like lots of other state agencies, this ended up being a decrease. We lost $32,380 <coughs> out of these funds, which was a pretty pretty hard hit. The good news is um, I had applied for the Section 5310 funds, which have some federal money, so we're hoping, pretty sure that that's going to pick up that loss. Um, what we'll use this money for is actually the matching funds on that 5310 money. There's a 50% match, and we can use this to match that. So we're very fortunate. Also, um, $3,400 of these funds for the employment will be um, has been proposed to be given to DFS, and what they use those funds for are for um, transitional tenants, mm -hmm. clients, work first clients, um, for gas vouchers, maintenance um, items such as that. It went to the advisory board last week, and Derek is the chairman, and the advisory board did vote to recommend that the board approve these allocations as they are. Everything would come to the transit system with the exception of the $3,400 that would be allocated to DFS. Thank you. Um, okay, if we don't have any other, uh, if we don't have anyone signed up uh, for that, and we'll be taking this up uh, uh, further into our meeting. Uh, a resolution on that. We'll go ahead and close the public here. Thank you. Uh, next, we uh, have uh, adjustments to and approval of the agenda. Gentlemen, the uh, agenda has been provided earlier. Do we have any adjustments? Uh, I'm going to hate it for this. I like about a two minute report. Uh, just talk about my all time favorite subject, man, have a lady. Okay, we're, we're, you want, let's put that, you want to put that under old business? No, you put it under reports and presentations. Okay. I don't take any action. I'm just going to tell you what we're doing. Mr. Chairman, I will give a report on the uh, the dialysis center that we've been requesting that the board is fishing for. We've been requesting for. I'd like to give a one minute report on the progress of that petition. And we'll put that as F, uh, 8F. Mr. Chairman, I need to add two items okay. to the agenda. Um, the first thing is the uh, Bob and I are liaisons to the community funding pool and we met with that group this week and we have the recommendations that uh, they brought to us and we would like to, to uh, recommend approval of that and I think Jack's got copies of that 
for so wherever mr chairman you think that would be under new let's, new let's business put, let's, put, let's put that under 10 i for new 10 business. okay 10 i and that's the community Wait. funding pool and there's two do you make two copies yet you make 10. i mean okay and that's selfish point we'll discuss that we'll get another item. <laughs> yes uh the other item is where is it uh, lewis penland's here and uh, we have the the uh the proposed construction standards and definitions uh, that has come from the planning board and as Les on Bobby and I would like to put that on the agenda to to be received. I'm not sure if there's action, but we need to, to at least publicly receive that. Well, we'll put that on 9C for old business. And now, everybody get a copy of that? Yeah, they were in the box. You were well, perfect. Seen box. I haven't seen my oh, Well, then that's why we'll just receive it. Only, only Peppers and I get a copy of it. You don't get it. Mr. Chairman, oh, I have two that. budget <laughs> amendments to add, please. <laughs> And Mr. Chairman and I, County Manager, I believe we could get a short closed session. And we need a closed session for uh, real stuff. Uh, I think it's actually going to be attorney client privilege. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Preserve the attorney client privilege. And Mr. Chairman, finally, uh, maybe finally I'm not sure, uh, item. 10C, the Diamond Falls subdivision bonds, that needs to be removed. Okay, so Please. item 10C, we'll strike that, the Diamond Falls subdivision bonds. Okay. Any other adjustments to I'd like to make a <coughs> couple of recommendations on something, and uh, also I would like to present something that a citizen had brought forth to me just uh, that I said I would pass. Could you tell me what the nature of it is so we can decide where we want to put it? I'll be reports. I'll just let you see it right there. I've got some several copies of one page. May not even be nothing more to do than just hand them out, but okay. Uh, yeah, look yeah. yeah. He just asked me to, to put it under report. Yeah, let's okay. just put that under F G G. Even, even anyway, since I've got it in hand, I'll go ahead and pass it. Each one of them has got the other. Okay. Yeah. Okay, are there any, if we don't, if we have got any other adjustments, unless you brought your sleeping bag. Are you serving breakfast, Jeff? <laughs> okay, if, uh, if we don't have any, I'll entertain a motion that we accept the approval. So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. All right, so we got a motion and a second to approve the agenda as noted with adjustments. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. So moved. All right, guys, let's get started. All right, on item eight, uh, we'll start at, at uh, eight. Uh, it's reports and presentations, working first, uh, Lake County plan. Let's go. Health department's broad as you up here to check my plate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you lucked out, but you did. I did, and I appreciate it. Um, I come uh, before you to get uh, approval of the work first electing county plan that has been proposed for 2012 to 2014. This plan was developed, has been reviewed by our work first electing <coughs> county um, welfare reform planning committee also. We've had copies posted at four public locations. It's been posted on the county website for a two week comment period. Um, I think commissioners have all received copies of such all, uh, of the plan, and we did not receive any public comment. Um, we did thoroughly review, uh, uh, Kevin, uh, Commissioner Corbin, excuse me, uh, is uh, the representative on our Welfare Reform Planning Committee. And so we did review this plan yesterday. Um, there are three primary changes I will just highlight, one of which um, we are proposing to contract for life coach services and this would be to help with families that have issues uh, primarily with substance abuse, mental health issues, uh, finance issues. Um, we've had a job coach in the past and we want to evolve this uh, type of position. It would be a contract. Uh, it would not be a staff position. It would be a contract for services. 
Additionally, we would like to raise the emergency assistance uh, cap. Currently, it's at $200 for a family for a year. We want to raise that to $400 for a family for a year to resolve emergency needs such as housing, uh, heating assistance, those type of areas. Uh, for those that are 200% of poverty and below, uh, families with children. The third area was the, um, for families that have SSI, which we have uh, only four families currently receiving the work first cash assistance. But for families that receive the SSI, we would want to re um, only have to review their cases every two years. Um, and then there's reportable changes throughout that, but it would just expedite. Even though there's only four cases, you would have to review them often. So those are the three primary changes from what's currently approved um, in our current operational biennial plan. Um, it has to be submitted to the state for their review once you approve here, hopefully tonight. Then we have to submit it, I'll take it to our social services board next week, and then we submit it to the state division by September 30th. They will review, they review all the plans to ensure that we comply with all federal and state rules. And they have always approved our plans in the past. Um, we've been submitting them now since 1998, and they've always approved them. So we would want them to go through the process, and we may have to come back with you to any amendment that they may request, but at this point, <coughs> we don't anticipate any. Um, and the Welfare Reform Planning Committee unanimously mm -hmm. recommended uh, the plan yesterday. Mm -hmm. Ms. Chairman, I'd like to add, if you, if you know, if you don't know, that this year, Work First also came under attack. The elected counties came under attack on a statewide level. And uh, the, not only the Phil County Association and County Commissioner, but we had a lot of support to maintain our elected county status. And for those of our desire from the beginning of this process, and uh, so, uh, there's never a no-brainer, I don't think, Mr. Chairman, that there's ever been one maintaining our status as electing county and submitting this as always prepared. And we will be watching very carefully for any changes that might be made, especially in the MOA. And uh, so, uh, Ms. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we go ahead and we, uh, that we agree with the, with recommending folks and then we pass the work first to Lexington County Plan as presented. I'll second that motion. So we have a motion and a second. Uh, everyone's reviewed this on the board that uh, we approve the uh, uh, work first elected county plan <clears throat> for 212-214 uh, with the minor changes that, that uh, Ms. Kenji presented. Uh, any other discussion or comment or questions? If not, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Let the record show you now. Thank and you, I, would, Thank I would you. ask also that uh, we request an amendment to our current plan. Um, we would like to have the three areas that were recommended for 2012-2014 in our current plan, which is we have to send the request for amendment. And you want to make the three changes yeah. that are in the new plan, you want to make them effective now. And, and request the state to And our, our meeting yesterday, the board all agreed to make that recommendation, right. so I'll, I'll make that motion that we we amend the current year's plan to include those changes that, that Jane mentioned. So I'll say so we, we got a motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor put a five by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Jane, you know when the review will take place? Uh, over the next 60 days after they're all to be submitted by... Before Thanksgiving? We hope. You'd hope. Uh, we would hope. Since there's only seven of us left, I wouldn't think it would take that much time to review one. Yeah, and they yeah, have to prepare yeah. it for the legislature, so I think they're trying everything in place by January. Do you ever get to see the other six? Yes, we may. You, mm -hmm. you, so and you, get, have, to, you we, get to compare notes, and mm -hmm. that's what's going to be important. We all stay in lockstep here. Right. Right. We're working closely well together. That's We're very important. Together. We lockstep. Okay. Right. Yes. And, and I, the committee asked me to note also that one of the changes we've asked is that cap being increased to $400. One of the reasons being is that the significant cuts we're anticipating in our energy program. And we are, um, just for example, one area, the low income energy assistance. Last year, we uh, distributed probably about four hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of assistance in the community. We're going to get forty-six thousand dollars this year. 
Okay. Is um, by upping this cap that amount, and that's going to hope hopefully help with some of those things. And on page 14, for those of you that are very careful under the child care, the big change in child care is now, unless you are a three star, a three star, don't ask me about this dog, but unless you're a three star facility, you no longer qualify for subsidy payments from child care, which devastates what little child care we have in Macon County, by the way. Uh, so uh, you, can't, you can't make that up. I mean, it's that bad. So. Uh, so with the child care situation, if you'll read and, and, and the daycare coordination that, that goes along with electing counties is also very important and we'll keep watching over that maybe we could. And we talked about their meeting and James eloquently mentioned that, but something I think we need to really talk about and hopefully the media will help us communicate this is there's less money for things like energy assistance available. And so when people come there and and they, they don't have it or they have less money than they had and then the thought is well we'll go to the churches we'll go to the, the mm -hmm. these groups and, and and who have less money it's uh, folks need to be aware that, that mm -hmm. well to give you a good example the biggest allotment we got last year was seventy four thousand dollars out of the four hundred the biggest mm -hmm. look well it lasted no that's the crisis that's the, the crisis the, right. it lasted that's, four and a half hours last okay. year we got about two hundred forty thousand of that and we're going to get about 188 thereabouts but so they're changing the, the target population also of who can be eligible. <coughs> There's going to be a community um, resource 20, planning meeting. The 21st. Uh, the last Wednesday of this month it, it was announced. Yeah. So we are, uh, we've invited many of our stakeholders in the community to come together to try and plan because it's going to be a very difficult one. Well, we have uh, already struggling in the summertime. Mm -hmm. We are. It's, it's not. Mm -hmm. so winter's around the corner. <coughs> That's just something. That, we were thinking folks need to be aware of it every time we have a chance to mention that, that it's going to be important to mention. So thank you, James. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, under B, I've been asked as liaison. Mr. Holland had another previous engagement, so uh, Chief Harrell is present. Uh, the sheriff will be along just as soon as possible. So if we can move on down the agenda and come back to them, if you don't mind. Uh, we'll we'll uh, just hold uh, B towards the end here on, on the report and presentation. We'll move on to Wells Grove Baptist Church. Uh, Mr. Cook, the uh, flood plain and field uh, issues. I've got just a copy for everyone to help. Pass out the commission of the You got it. I believe I'm to challenge it. I'd like to have one for everybody. Alright, thanks, sir. I'm not asking for a variance. <laughs> I, I've been told that if I did, I would probably be turned down because that's a Pandora's <laughs> box that the board does not want to open up, and I do not blame them. The situation with Wells Grove Baptist Church is in 19, or excuse me, 2007, June of 2007, we bought 8.6 acres of property just across the road from where our church now sits. Our intention at that time, the day we bought it, or probably a couple of days before, we started filling. Because we had to fill that lower section. Uh, one of our members knew that there's a 50 foot setback, so we sat back a little further than 50 foot. We didn't want to encroach on that area at all. At that time, uh, there was a note placed on the bulldozer on the site that said well, you were in violation of the county ordinances. So one of our deacons of the church uh, went to the ordinance house and asked them what does Wells Grove Baptist Church need to do to be in compliance. He was told that we need to first uh, put up a silk fence and maintain the 50-foot buffer zone from Colasadra River. That's what we did, and we continued to fill. 
since 2007, we have continued to feel in that section. Uh, we feel this last year, a couple of dump truck loads that we found. Uh, so I'm asking the board to consider under Article 6, Section B of your statute when you adopted the new floodplain ordinance. It basically says in there that if you had an ongoing job, I'm just summarizing that, you've got the statutes in front of you, and you had a plan with the flood ordinance, uh, a floodplain administrator. Well, there was no floodplain administrator at that time in 2007. It went to someone else, and nobody knows exactly who was <coughs> in charge at that time. We have continually filled in this area until this year. I was elected chairman of the Deacons for Wells Grove, and I said, we're going to do this correctly to make sure that we don't violate any laws, and I went to a zoning administrator and that we can't fill. You're not allowed to fill in that area anymore. Uh, we were operating under the assumption that we had done everything correctly. I do not know why we were never asked to file a plan. I assume, and this is my assumption, that they thought they would help Wells Grove Church out and just we wouldn't have to file no plane or any fees and they're just going to let us fill. Uh, and we were filling under that assumption, but we thought we were legal. Now they said you don't have a plan on files under the old statute, so you cannot fill. I feel that this appeal, this statute that you have would fit Wells Grove Baptist Church. It is not our fault that a plan was not put in place because we never knew we had to put one in place. We were visited uh, in August and the only violation they listed on that, I think got a copy <coughs> of it, on that form was that we were in violation, our silt pits was leaching out and we had to correct that, which we did. Uh, all this led to believe, us to believe that we were continuing with our field and we had no problems until Walmart started to build and they promised us a bunch of free dirt. <laughs> and we can, we can finish our project with that free dirt. Uh, I was told before I come that you would not consider this. I hope I'm wrong. Because to fail to do this, Wells Grove Church has bought a piece of property that half of it's going to be worthless to us if we can't fill. We have worked closely with uh, Matt here and his boss, and they've come up with an alternative plan. If you look at your map, which you have in your packet, it's in the first packet. The map will show you that we can dig on the property that's outside the floodplain, bring it down into the buffer zone, which will be about a 50 foot setback from the river, and we can use that dirt to fill this section up. Then we got the field hole, which we can legally fill under the existing thing. What that's going to cost the church is all the digging going on out there, bringing it back, it's, it's, it's just too much for Welcome Church to have to face. We're going to end up with the same thing. It's going to be filled. It's just going to cost us more to do it that way than it would be if we were allowed to continue on, on our old plan to fill it the way we were doing. Uh, I'm asking that, that we do fill in this section since our job had, did start in 2007 and has been continuing since then, uh, that you consider us in that, uh, under that Article 6, Section B. It would be greatly appreciated by the members of Wells Grove Baptist Church. Uh, I'm hoping that this can all be done without getting attorneys involved. But, uh, that's up to this board. It's not up to me. Mr. Chairman, if I could speak to it, I've worked with Mr. Cook on this project uh, and, and looked at it and very familiar with it. Uh, talked to Mr. Cook today. Uh, I think it's important that the board knows a few things here. That this is a parking lot. Uh, a 
I think Jerry will readily tell you that yes. the church has no plans to put no permanent kind of structure on this property at all. Well, on the outside the flood zone. Out, in the, and not in the flood zone. build the church outside, not, not, not the on the field. Uh, and we know that this board has been very consistent. And I mean, Jerry talked about today that uh, uh, of denying you know, variances in the flood <coughs> What I would ask, Mr. Chairman, in, in this situation, uh, I would ask that that uh, you give me permission, along with our county attorney, and along with Mr. Cook and the rest of the Deacon Board, and Matt and Jack Morgan, to uh, to take a little more time to review this a little bit more and bring it back to this board for consideration. There might be another alternative we can come up with, and I would ask that for that leniency, Mr. Chairman, I'd ask that. If you don't mind to appoint me to that along with the county attorney and uh, and Mr. Morgan as I'm liaison to that department and uh, to see if there's some kind of <coughs> to the folks who I think I think it's I think it's well proven that that Wellsville Church had no intent <coughs> to break any kind of ordinance or statute and I think this is one of those that's called in there and I think that. I think that maybe there's some alternatives we can get together and work on. So I'd like to be given that leniency. Talk to Mr. Cook about it and he said the church. The only problem has they do have access to this dirt at Walmart. If you've not seen that, they have about nine zillion yards of dirt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, but I think that working with, with Mr. Morgan, I spoke to Mr. Morgan and was mad about it. And I think that there might be some <coughs> alternatives we could come up with on this and, and work together and make sure that we stay within the ordinance with the county attorney so i would ask for that uh that leniency if, if mr cook agrees and you agree mr Chair. i agree so hard to guess uh, i mean without without uh, objection or would you be willing to consult and work mr attorney absolutely and, and uh mr bill's already stated he would mr cook if, if if we can do that we can probably find a uh, uh a solution that's agreeable to all while staying within our Excellent. ordinance and and uh, and let, let's see if we can work that out together so okay. if everyone's agreed i'll just let let you kind of head, head up i look forward to working with mr cook yeah. and the deacon board and, and, and our folks and i think we can have something that the church can live with and uh, I mean, this is a little different circumstance than we've ever had before. It is. It's a little bit, a little different group than we've had before. Yeah. So uh, we would ask for that leniency, and I think Mr. Cook has agreed, and I look forward to working with the Deacon Board as does our employees. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Cook. Uh, if we, don't, if uh, no other comments, uh, we'll take that route and we'll move on to our next next slide. Yeah, uh, health care access. Ms. Jordan. Thank you. I appreciate the chance to bring my ideas <coughs> before the board. Um, I was the administrator of the Community Care Clinic of Franklin, which is the free health clinic, from its opening February 2010 until the end of July 2011. So I am not in the, an official capacity. I'm speaking as an interested community member. Um, in that role, however, I saw many residents of our area being assisted with their health concerns. Many of our population here and throughout the U.S. have chronic health problems such as diabetes and hypertension, among other problems. More than 1,200 clients have enrolled for these free health services since the opening of the clinic. The clinic is important here in Macon County and has improved access to care for those who are uninsured and meet the income guidelines for the free clinic. It is held in the evening, two evenings per week, utilizing donated space from the health department. It's very encouraging to me that the concept of free basic health care for everyone is supported in this county and is mentioned in the comprehensive plan. I not only want to bring the importance of that clinic to the commissioner's attention, but to discuss the benefits and costs of health care to the larger population. There has been discussion and application for a kidney dialysis center in Franklin to serve, Mr. Beal told me, approximately 34 individuals. And I don't know the exact number. Currently, my understanding is that they need to travel to another county for these services. So it occurred to me that we have a transit system already in place here 
and that perhaps expanding services to accommodate each kidney dialysis patient in need of transportation, even if the schedule is demanding, would use a service already in place here. In addition, the transit possibly could expand to some evening hours to accommodate free clinic patients that have a problem with transportation. Many times, diabetes and hypertension are precursors to kidney failure, so treating problems early and helping to gain access to treatment for those that otherwise would go without would benefit the county and its population in the long run and the long term. A greater number of people may be helped for a lesser cost overall. The clinic did a very informal survey for a couple of weeks in late April and early May of 2011. Very informal, very random sample. We asked about 60 clients three questions. Did they have a problem getting to the clinic tonight? Do they know of someone who needs to come to the clinic and can't find a ride? And would they be able to pay a small fee for a ride such as two or four dollars? 28% who answered say that everyone filled the survey out that night, um, several nights. 28% stated they experienced difficulty getting to the clinic. 35% stated they knew of someone who needed to see a doctor but had trouble getting to the clinic. And 91% said they could afford to pay a very small fee for a ride. I know transportation is not cheap but it just occurred to me that to capitalize on the system already in place benefiting many residents in the county and might help um, a large number of people may be a good idea i understand that a private company would establish the dialysis center health care costs are already out of control for many reasons but establishing a new center for a few individuals drives up costs over the long run not that establishing a center is a negative, but perhaps there are alternatives that could be looked at. Perhaps the center could be sponsored by the hospital or by something existing in the county already, rather than a new company. Um, I just think that our health care system costs all of us when expensive alternatives are chosen over some solutions that are local that might spread benefit to more people. So please consider the preventive value of access to health care for all residents of our area and support expanding the public transportation as part of the means to access. Carefully consider all health care costs and alternatives before committing to a new facility. Thank and that's a brief statement. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will say that I did talk to Ms. Jordan and encourage her to get with Kim on local transportation. I mean, I'm arguing about the have, dialysis we center. Have, we have spoken. We worked together when I was the administrator. Okay, but the dialysis center, the, the transportation people have the same argument that we've always made. They can't get across the mountain either. Right. right. So, they pretty much just that. we borrow the EMS vehicle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or you have a retro station or a pool across. <clears throat> In my view, uh, Ms. Jordan's argument is not her water, Mr. Chairman. Uh, next, we'll uh, recognize Vice Chair McCuffer who wants to uh, bring us up to speed on the amount of hair. Two seconds. Uh, <laughs> as, you know, as you know, we've been uh, searching uh, all over Nan Hale Lake to uh, try to find a place. We talked with Duke. We talked with Wildlife Resources. But we had ourselves all settled up at Queens Creek, and then I checked my box a little while back, and there's a petition with over 300 signatures on it saying we want to go back and look at Rocky Bridge. So let the word go forth that if 300 of my constituents drop a petition on me, I'm going to ask the question again. Uh, so we are reopening talks with Duke. We are reopening talks with Wildlife Resources. The only thing I might ask of the county manager or of this board would be a letter, if nothing else. If we're having a hard time getting a meeting set up, just a letter requesting a meeting with those folks, and we'll go, we'll go around the lake again and make sure that, that no really means no. Uh, but but that that's that's where we're going. Uh, the the petitions are quite impressive. Uh, to be quite honest with you, it's really heartening to see a group of people come together and think about one thing all together and say, hey, get up and do this. So I'm more than happy to reopen the discussion. 
I don't know if they're going to win the day. I won't know until I sit down with them, but I just wanted this <coughs> to know that I'm continuing down that path, and, and that's where we are. I, I thank you, Mr. Cooper. I, I, can, um, I think I can speak for the board and say that we're more than uh, willing to write a letter or whatever we need to do. I mean, uh, Deaner can make a meeting, I think, and, and I appreciate it. Mr. Manager, if, if you have any difficulty or if you think we need to, to pour around that with a letter, let us know. If, if I can't get the meeting set up within a week, Jack, I'll call you and we'll, talk and we'll put something together. I don't think it'll be a problem. I think they'll sit down with us. Commissioner, this is on that uh, on that negotiation over there where they want access. To them and the what they want to do is they want a they want a beach, a swimming beach established at Rocky Bridge boat ramp. And I, I've talked to the people that that, that are sponsoring the petition, and, and and I have no problem with pursuing it. I think, though, in fairness to all the citizens that use the lake, it is important to remember that there's only so much access. <clears throat> and anything you give to the swimmers, you take away from the boaters. And so there are two sides. This petition is is the swimmer's side. But there are two sides because that, that's what makes it an issue. If it wasn't that, it would be a fact. If it's not a fact, it's an issue. So there are two sides to this. We're going to consider both sides, okay? Uh, if we can't reach an agreement with WRC, then, then Wildlife Resources Commission, then you know, obviously Rocky Bridge will stay the way it is. Right? At this point, do they have access somewhere to go? At this point, they can swim in Queens Creek Lake unabated. Okay, but Queens Creek Lake is not Nanahill Lake. Queens Creek Lake is 10 or 12 minutes above Nanahill Lake, not as easily accessible. And I understand exactly what they're telling me. I mean, it's not lost on me what they're saying to me. I just don't know if we can overcome the safety and environmental issues of boaters and swimmers in that close proximity. I don't know if we're going to be able to overcome that. But I'm going to try. At all safety, I, I understand it's an issue too. I know I have had a lot of people when I've been in Nine Hale on other business ask me about it. And all I can do, all I can do, brother, or Mr. Higgins, is, is ask the question and, and, and see where we go. That's a good one. I'd be all for it. If it's, uh, me too. If we could do it, that, that believe it or not, when we started looking, that was my first choice. Right. Okay. But, but it didn't work. So. All right. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Sorry to No, no, not at all. Uh, next, uh, we have uh, Commissioner Bill going to bring us up to date on dialysis. Our, uh, Ms. Chow and I will be in Raleigh on Friday morning, uh, September the 16th at 10 o'clock, uh, to hear the results of our petition and our, uh, that we, the petition, not only the petition we passed, but the resolution we passed in support of these families who are in desperate need of a local dialysis here in Macon County, which is life and death to these folks. I think we've made a strong case. Uh, we're anxious to hear the results. We think we're going to have a positive from the Medical Facilities Planning Review Committee. I think, you, I think we're going to have a positive recommendation that Macon County does proceed with that. I will be there to answer any questions I can from those two committees and uh, to see what our next steps are. So I'll be in Raleigh on, the, on Friday at 10 o'clock to hear the results of our request. Uh, we're very hopeful that it will be a positive request as I think we've made a, a very strong case for, for those counties who may not fit the exact criteria that the state has placed, but due to a lot of circumstances, whether it be topography and a lot of other things, I think we've made a strong case and we will be there and uh, we're hopeful for a positive result. Thank you. I see Sheriff Hollins here. Why don't we go back to that in that way? So, won't you, gentlemen, come on up? Uh, this is Sheriff Hollins, Chief uh, Harold. They're going to speak about uh, potentially seeing what we might be able to do to retain a part time magistrate and how and why that might be important, gentlemen. Um, Thank you. First of all, you all have the letter that we, me and uh, Chief Harrell sent out to you all um, recently. Um, basically what's occurred is, is they've uh, made the decision to, to eliminate so many uh, magistrate positions throughout the state. And I know what they've done. They've looked at a map. They broke it by county. And where our stance is, is the fact of the matter is they're not looking at the distance of travel between Highlands and Franklin. And to be honest with you, um, it, it takes a lot of effort for us to have the manpower in Highlands, keep them in Highlands, and if you eliminate a magistrate's position in, in, in Highlands, 
then that means the both the city officer as well as the county officer will then in any time that they arrest somebody will then have to to leave highlands leave it um, uh, uncovered no protection whatsoever um, and, and a layperson might say well you know working together between the two agencies we can switch out you know um, the if the highlands officer goes down to franklin you know the deputy can go in there and, and maintain protection but the, the reality of it is what if we get a call out in the county um, in the meantime then you've left the, the city alone um, the magistrate is um, great to work with in highlands um, he's basically on call um, he, and most of the time is when he's working is in the middle of the night and um, at, at night time and so you know the, the twenty thousand dollars that, that they think that they're going to save by eliminating that position where I can guarantee you we're going to spend that in uh, travel time uh, for a drunk driver alone is three hours um, in the Franklin area so you can only imagine what it would be is if we leave Highlands area to come down to, to Franklin um, and it's just it's just going to be a tremendous cost um, and, and we, we drafted this letter jointly to try to, to get you as well as uh, his board of commissioners in the city of Highlands to, to pass a resolution uh, to support uh, the, the governor and the, um, them to, to fund the money and to re reconsider eliminating that position. You want to add anything? There's really not a lot more I can say other than it would be an understatement to say the hardships that it would present for all of Macon County. Um, not only law enforcement, but it also serves obviously the magistrate there on the civil side of things that people will have to come down and citizens that not opposed to in normal circumstances, but in a lot of those conditions, the inconveniences and the hardships that we placed on them, uh, again, would just be a travesty to the entire county. And uh, the financial um, burden that, that we will bear as a county and the community of Highlands in and of itself, uh, it's not something that should be passed down to local government for the shortfall of the state's uh, unfortunate budget cuts. Another uh, thing that you all are fully aware of is the mental health situation. That would, that would then require any mental health situations up in Highlands to come down to the Franklin area and, and you all as a board know how many hours and days that takes to get accomplished and you'd be pulling somebody out of Highlands to be able to do that. I, I, I would like to, if I could, make a quick comment. Uh, I, first I'd say I'm fully supportive of this. A uh, couple of reasons. Uh, the main one being safety and a close second is financial. Uh, I happen to know the master pretty well and and I've spoken with him and and uh, like you say twenty thousand dollars is not a it's a part time magistrate. But yeah, and, and but the main thing is about probably eighty percent of what he does is around three o'clock in the morning. It's domestic disturbances, mm -hmm. uh, things like that, so you guys, whatever. And he knows just about everybody in Highland as most people that live there know everybody and he basically just lets people sign personal recognizance bonds because if you, uh, they're not going anywhere. He knows them. And so he knows them. And so uh, it, it's not a requirement to go down and get bond and all that kind of stuff because they're not going anywhere. Uh, and if he doesn't know them, it's a different situation. But most of the time he knows these people. But what, what it's going to cost the county, uh, and, and like I think, and, and Chief Harold, correct me if, we're, if I'm wrong, but we only have two officers at night. That's right. And, and, and so, so we're losing half of our coverage by having an officer have to drive down. And See, I think that's the problem, Sheriff. Sir, Sheriff, I just, I disagree with what you said. I think that's all they looked at was the distance between Highlands and Franklin. Well, I don't think they looked at the reality of transiting that exactly. distance. No, that's the safety no, that's the hard thing. Thing. On a, on on a map, they look at 15 minutes and think it's 15 minutes, not four. On a, on a map, it looks like it's ten miles. Same. It looks yeah, like it's the same distance from Raleigh. Take your finger from Raleigh to Chapel Hill as it is from Franklin to Highlands. Mm -hmm. right. That's a little different road. Probably more like Raleigh to Cary. But, but, yeah. but uh, thank yeah. you guys for coming. And, and I, I think, think we, we should we do it. I'm, I'm yeah. Yeah. Well, do Gentlemen, it. I prepared a uh, proposed resolution. Uh, yeah. Brian Welch um, called a after working with these two gentlemen and brought up some of the salient points that needed to be included in a proposed resolution. I've prepared one for your consideration. It's well, entitled Resolution of Macon County Board of Commissioners regarding the proposed elimination 
for the part-time magistrate position in Highlands, Macon County, North Carolina. I think it picks up the essence of what I've heard from these gentlemen's comments as well as comments from the board. You got it. Where's your name? It's in that. It was laying underneath your stuff. Resolution. Uh, oh, okay. elimination. Uh, Chief Harrell has uh, on the list of folks that you see. Uh, have you spoke to any of those? Uh, has, the, has the board of the Highlands Commissioner taken it up? Do you know, at this point, they're waiting on your action, and then they were going to take it up in the next <coughs> board meeting. Have you talked to any of these other, or Senator Davis? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Representative West, have you talked to any? No, I was going to once, once, so have once I spoke with to you all to on the record, then I was going to go to them and talk to them. But I felt like I didn't want you to get blindsided by one of them, and then you not know. Um, what was going on? So I was going to. About how much money? Total twenty thousand. For a manager versus, oh, yeah. versus the versus the travesty that it's going to cause Town of Highlands in lieu of what you said, uh, Chairman uh, McClellan is. I, I've got to ask for more officers, which in a normal circumstance is not necessarily a bad thing, but in order to give protection twenty four seven in the Town of Highlands, and in and of itself, we're talking about over a couple hundred thousand dollars. For that kind of coverage versus just a couple of points dollars. that I might make on this. The um, the county is not saying, and I, and I assume the town of Highlands Police Department is not saying either, that they don't want to share in the tightening of the belt process. And this resolution will, will bring that out. The uh, there's, there's a proposal to cut a full time uh, magistrate position and, and, a and in, as well as this half-time position, yeah. and, and you've already taken care of that, really. That's already. <laughs> no, we're losing one and a half positions. Yeah, we're, we're going to fight for. We're for not that. asking to keep the half. Yeah, yeah. we're not even contesting the one. Exactly, right. Right. and I, and I think that doesn't need to get lost in this discussion no, because of. But the the point that Brian made about this gentleman in Highlands being uh, part-time or half-time. I think is a really, really valid point. He's essentially on call, and so he's available he's when he's... 100% on call. That's why he gets up at 3 in the morning. He's the essentially day. available when he's needed, and he's there when he's needed. And, and, and I'm, not, I'm not discrediting any of our magistrates, no. but I wish we had five magistrates just like our halftime magistrate. He does a fantastic job. And he's always never hesitates to come out. He's sure there. About we talked about ironically, by eliminating the one magistrate, by eliminating the one magistrate, by now you're going to have to pay time and a half or extra time to fill that other magistrate. We're probably going to end up costing more than had you kept the magistrate. Absolutely. Well, and, I, and another thing that doesn't need to get lost in here, to the extent that state law enforcement need a magistrate up there, they're going to have to come. Down. And, and what will happen in the near future when these, when these cuts are made officially, which is 2012, is when they go into effect. Um, not that any of you would get arrested, but if you get arrested in the middle of the night, you're going to sit in jail until the next morning when a master comes on duty. Oh, we don't do that. Yeah. Well, Mr. Chairman, just looking over the resolution, I think this is absolutely a, its own target. And, and Ronnie, this is not unlike issue after issue we deal with. We all have to understand these budget cuts are, are coming down the pipe. They're, they're necessary because of the economy. We need to we need to acknowledge that, but what sometimes <coughs> folks in Raleigh and or Washington don't understand, we dealt with it with uh, with the dialysis thing, Ronnie, with this topography. Uh, we've dealt with it with several other issues, and this is just another one where they don't understand. We live in a county. Uh, Beth and I were talking about this weekend. To drive from Topton to Blue Valley takes two and a half hours in Macon County. They're, they're that's right. making good time. Yeah, that's, that's if you drive fast and don't stop. Don't and and so that's where we have to, we have to say there have to, there has to be exceptions. I think we have to support the fact that that budget cuts are coming because everybody's having to live with sure. it. Well, I'm gonna put it simpler than that. It's just another one of those things, another one of those inconveniences and money that they're not passing down to counties. Yeah, I'll just leave and, uh, and I'll tell you, another, I'll add another one to that. The, they didn't they didn't uh, think that the opinion of the local government mattered. They just, they they just continue to not it. pass yeah. down to us. We're going to be choking but, but on that, what they didn't what I'm pass saying, down I think to. what happens a lot of times, Robbie, they, they do these things as a broad brush. Right. And if you, it, it's almost if you, if you don't say something, 
then then it winds up being reality. Did any of the so, local our local legislators contact you, sheriff, before this was voted on by no. them? They both supported you. Um, I was con I was contacted by Vic Perry. Um, and so neither one of the legislators contacted no. you because they both supported this cut. So yeah, no. Find that in. I, I heard about it after the fact. We were just informed the cuts would take effect in 2012. That's how I found out. Uh, gentlemen, if we don't, um, I can read this into the record if need be. I don't no, believe no. it's necessary, but uh, we do need to entertain a motion on this. So we'll move. Second. We've got a motion and a second. Uh, all in favor, please Aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you guys. Thank you guys for thank you. Thank you very much. And, uh, let us know. Keep cutting the thing. And, and if you, you need us to also to help, uh, make some phone calls, write letters to other uh, public. This is a big statement. And, and on the 20th, I'm, I'm talking that we'll do it. Yeah, I'm certain that they'll be unanimous that they're going to support that too. It's like a no-brainer. So hopefully we'll get some help. Thank you all for taking Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. When is this supposed to happen? When, when the contract it, runs, ends for this magistrate's position by state legislation in December 2012. So it's, it's so a little over a year. So we've got a year and a, one year. One year and three months or so. Yeah. But talking about the, the Brandon McDowell resign right here or did or he's moving somewhere else or I'm, I'm not he, sure. He does. He actually leaves next week. I, I heard that today. I didn't realize it either. But are you going to? Are they going to rehire somebody for that job until? That's the clerk and AOC. We then, can. I mean, yeah. Because you've had one. That's the Superior Court judge. That's the bill driver pay grade. Okay. <laughs> We're the little people. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Okay, our last item on reports and presentations. Uh, Commissioner Hagen handed out this uh, item. It says resolution, but really it's not a resolution. It's just a uh, statement. 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 Uh, and Mr. Haven, if you want to comment on this, you're welcome. Well, on. well it's something Charlie had got mentioned up here before about uh, passing some resolutions on to see if we could get industry back in the country. And so many of the jobs being overseas and so he brought back up the other day and he asked me if I'd present it up here and I said I'd do that. Right. He says, He'd give I, you a copy. He, he did. I, I think what he, uh, his point is, and we can we can take this written there. We can paraphrase. I think his point is that that uh, we've lost a lot of jobs to foreign countries, and a lot of our industry's gone overseas over the years. And now that our, and I'm paraphrasing, I think what he meant that, that uh, now that our economy has uh, has tanked, so to speak, that, that we've turned around and looked, and those jobs are here. And uh, I think he's just asking that we say that we think in the long run we'd be better off as a, as locally as a state and as a nation to try to encourage interest to come back here and warn us to pass some type of resolution to that effect. Is that yeah. sort of what he was? We'll take that under advice. Okay. Okay, moving on to old business. Uh, item 9A, consideration of adoption of comprehensive transportation plan. You want to? You don't have to. Uh, no. no, sir. It's, it's nobody's else's. Uh, okay. Move it. All right. Do we have you know, Everyone's looked at it. Do we have we a have motion? I'll, I'll move it. I'll move We've got a motion to adopt. We have a second. Second. We've got a motion and a second. Do we have any other discussion on the adoption of, of a comprehensive transportation plan? Mr. Mr. Major, I'd just like to make sure where. I'm kind of mixed up with where the status is on approval by the municipalities. I think both municipalities have, both have, have approved, have approved yeah, their, yeah, side, their yeah, share. Yeah, okay, that's the yeah. only question I have. They had to have our permission to approve that we want to make any changes in Lincoln municipalities. They have approved it. Right. That's, back, back, that's, that's, back, that's, okay. that, that's what I thought we were. Just yeah. want to make sure that's, that's right. right. Okay. That's the only question. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? The motion shows carried unanimously. I think uh, as the next step on that, correct me if I'm wrong, Chairman, I mean, uh, Mr. Bill, is uh, our uh, Rural Transportation Committee will uh, take some consideration and approve it on the 26th of their uh, 
So on behalf of all the lot of people that put many, many hours in on this, Mr. Chairman, we'd like to say thank you and I think that at our RPO meeting on the twenty sixth that it will be uh, it will be passed unanimously there also. And I want to thank the board also for your consideration of it. It was a long, long process. Yes, process. Uh, but well done and the price was right. So we, we, we got her cheap, didn't we? So uh, good job by all concern and thank you for the board for concern. Guys, I thought we might just keep coming. If y'all are all doing good, we'll keep pushing. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Uh, our net, our, our, at least till eight before we take oh, yeah. it. Oh, yeah. Keep rolling. And if y'all can keep rolling, <laughs> we're only <laughs> chicken, so he's got the best bladder. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're just halfway through the second quarter. We're good. That's right. All right. Good luck. <laughs> all right. The next item on is a 9B exchange of real estate uh, uh, with uh, Donald and uh, Betty Fisher. I hope you guys have a chance to. Talk with uh, I, I did get up there and walk with them. All right, good enough. All right, let me let me just give you a little background, right quick, if I can, just kind of share. Um, several years ago, the county purchased a, uh, a piece of property that uh, up at the uh, at Zachary Park, uh, up in Highlands on Buck Creek Road. At that time, uh, there was a thought that. And, and it was a little bit of a different time because the uh, uh, it was a different time. There's more money, is what I'm trying to say. The county had more money, and we, we were thinking we'd continue to expand, and we still hope uh, to do that to some degree. And none of us were here. Yeah, and, and yeah, well, I mean, none of us were here at that time, which was, but the county just purchased that piece of property, and, and the idea was we were going to put, and it's not contiguous to everything else, there are several lots in between. And um, another piece of property came open um, about three years ago, and, and we and we bought about 75 percent of that lot with an option on the rest of the property uh, to purchase, and that gave us at, uh, the ability to expand the parking. And all we did was level it out a little bit and put gravel on it. We didn't pave it or anything, but it basically more than doubled the parking. Uh, the lady that, that when we had the option on the piece of property in the in the interim of that, and, and the reason we were looking basically to expand the park in the way we were looking at it at that time was because uh, the girls' high school soccer team, the boys' high school soccer team, the JV soccer team, the 14 under, 12 and under, 10, 8, 5, or whatever age they had, every single team used one soccer field. And so it was getting tremendous use and it looked, it, it just was, you know, got overrun and they couldn't even keep grass on it. Additionally, it was uh, a little bit short of official length and so whenever the high school every year went to the playoffs, they have to go get special permission to have a home game on the field because it's not quite regulation. There was already property that the school owned, the county school system owned, behind the school at Highland School and a decision was made to build a soccer field there. They're the only school in the county that didn't have any kind of ball field or anything that was theirs. And so that field's been built and taken care of and paid for. And I think we built that for about 30 cents on the dollar because there are local people that put in a lot of effort and time and volunteer work and materials to get that done. <coughs> Since that happened, it's taken tremendous load off the soccer field exactly Park because the biggest people, which are the high school teams, aren't pounding it every day and so now there's not quite the need to have or urgent need I'll say to have an expansion. We de we declined, I'll just say that to say we, we declined to exercise our option on, on the I'm gonna call it a quarter of the lot that where we had the parking and which worked out beautifully for the lady because she decided she wanted to come back and she wanted her house. So she wanted it, we didn't, and so it worked out great. We didn't put her out of a house or anything else, so it worked out great for her. The piece of property that, that is not contiguous, the, the, there's another piece that is contiguous on two sides that's been offered to us. It was offered to us 
what, Ronnie, two or three years ago, three years. on a swap plus on about $167,000 additional money. And we said, no, we didn't want to do that because we didn't have a, a pressing need for it because we now had the other soccer field. Those people have come back to us and said, how about we'll just do an even swap? And the reason is they want to do a swap is because the piece that the county owns is not contiguous to anything else backs up to their property. And so that piece is more valuable to them because it backs up to their property and they wouldn't want the county, for instance, to put a maintenance shed there or something, whatever the county might choose to do. That piece is landlocked. There's a little dirt, not even paved, but it's basically a landlocked piece of property. The piece they're offering is contiguous to the parking lot on one side and on the other side to the property the county already owns, kind of the backstop, if you will, where the walking track is and everything else. It is true, it, it is true that, uh, and, and the reason we put this off is, is uh, Mr. Brosnan had asked us to come out and look at it, and he, he was on the board and the other piece was purchased, and part of the piece that they want to swap does kind of fall off. You know, it could be backfilled if you needed it or, or whatever, but it does kind of fall off. But with in the foreseeable future, with our economic situation being what it is, I would say it's not very likely that we're going to purchase two or three other tracts of land to get to that other piece to make it, you know, continuous from, from what we have. And so they have offered us to, to uh, just do a, an even swap. Uh, one, both both pieces are 1.74 acres. The one they want to swap, I think, is on the tax rolls at 167. The one they're willing to take is 165. So according to the tax rolls, the tax value, the land size, are, they're almost identical. It's just that one is already adjoining two sides of the property we already own. So if we did want to expand our parking, you could do it extremely cheaply because it's already flat on half that property and basically it's just level off throwing gravel out there and we just expanded our parking again. So that that's that's what the um, what they brought before us and so I, I'd like to entertain discussion or uh, if anyone has any or well, I'll, I'll I'll jump out there Mr. Chairman. I don't want to be I don't want to be the cold water on the parade here, but I, I did go out and walk both pieces of property out. I very genuinely appreciate the opportunity to do that. Sure. Uh, I'm all for trading even for even. I'm all for trading, and, and I understand what the property values are, and I hear all that. But when I walk out there, I see one point whatever it is acres that you could use almost the whole thing, and then I see another 1.74 acres that I'm going to get to use about a third of an acre. And that's about all I'm going to get. I, I would disagree that you can backfill. I don't think there's anything to backfill against. I think it just drops off in the Never Never Land. And you're going to get to use the top third, but the rest of that you're not going to get to use. For no other reason than that. I have, I have no other dog in the fight. I don't have the history. I wasn't here. But if we're going to make a trade, I want to go even for even. And to me, it's not even for even. I don't care what the tax rolls say. You've only got a third of it that you can use. You got the whole thing up here that you can use. I'd want to trade for that too. Uh, heck yeah, why not? I mean, this is this is a whole. I get the whole 1.74 here. I don't get it down here. So I I can't support it. But I'm sure you know I'm just one voice in the wilderness. But I to me it's not even for even. I I can't support this one. So I mean, you think we ought to maintain that piece even though it's not? A I think I think a anymore. swap may come in the future that you might be able to get the contiguous. I don't think we have. I mean, we just laid out the argument that we really don't have any plans in mind. Uh, I don't think we're hurting for parking. I was just up there. It looked like you had an awful lot of parking. Uh, and so I don't see that we buy much by making the swap if we don't have any plan. I understood. I would have made, I could have been talked into it if we were in the, if we were in the soccer field, Fandango, that, that we needed that extra three feet to, or four feet to make that soccer field regulation. But we're not, and and we're in a good shape up there. We we don't have plans to expand, and so I think we're giving away a pretty nice piece of property to get a third of an acre, and I, I I have a hard time with that, and so that that's the only reason I'm opposed to it. Okay. okay. Any other comments or thoughts? Well, I also, you know, the advantage to the property that's not contiguous, and I could never understand exactly, you know, that. That's buying that, but I think Mr. Cuffer pointed exactly right. 
and we do have a, a right of way. There's a right of way to that. There's a right of way to that, to that but, it, but I don't see where, uh, you know, in the future, I, you know, I think the question is, is what are we going to do with this lot that's not connected to our property in the future? I think that's the question that we need to ask. I think that it's not going nowhere in any time future. I'm thinking that, uh, you know, that neither one of these pieces, the, the piece that does fall off, the problem that with filling that piece of property is to get a decent slope. And I, don't, I didn't shoot the grade on it, but to get a decent slope on it, and there's a road you have to contend with down at the bottom end. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I would, uh, you know, if uh, I'd, I'd go along with whatever the board decides, but mm -hmm. I would think that it's not, I don't think there's no pressure for us to have to swap this lot right now. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would, uh, I would trust your judgment too. This is, you, you have to be there every day and, and look at it. So I'd like to hear your thoughts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, yeah. I think it'd be nice to be able to to be able to expand the parking easily if we need to. I mean, that, I just don't know that when we would when the county is going to come up with money to buy all the pieces of property in between, and and and, and you know here's the opportunity with with no outlay uh, to the you know, no additional outlay just to even swap on the property that we could get a piece that adjoins on two sides what we already have. So that's why I just thought it was a, I mean, so I mean. That makes a, good sense. I mean, in my opinion, I think it's a, uh, you know, I think it's a pretty good, pretty good swap. You're, you're the one that has to. Well, I mean, we're working well, with the community. Well, right? we're, 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 I mean, we're all in we're together. All, we're, yeah. all we're all in together. Well, I mean, we're all elected right. countywide. We need to do what we think is right. And I think what you know, I think what we need to remember is that you know we didn't purchase this lot. You know, nobody on this board had, or nobody in this. I think on, I think it's Evelyn's on the ones even here. I was the sole one. You're the sole, you're the sole provider of who's here. I had questions then, and I got questions. But 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 but, 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 but this is one thing. But, but this is one thing about about that lot when it was purchased. I mean, I mean, you do have to realize that was a different time. We were growing. Our county was growing. We were, our revenues were going up on a regular basis. A lot of construction was going on. And there is reason to believe that there is potential at that time that we might be able to purchase all those parcels in between. Connect them all. Yeah, connect them all. I and, make sense. And, yep. and, and that would have been a great thing if we could do it. That does, I don't think that's the case now. And in addition, we don't need additional soccer fields out there because we're taking a huge load off because we've invested in a soccer, another soccer field uh, there at the school. I mean, in a utopian world, I'd love to keep that piece and buy all the other pieces, but we're not in a utopian world. And we've already invested and we've already invested money in putting another soccer field there. So, you know, if, if you don't, you know, if, if the if, if whatever the pleasure of the board is, if, if you if you don't wish to uh, make the swap, you can you can wait. I don't know if that opportunity presents itself later or not. You, you know, I don't know what the future is. I don't need. I, 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 I guess what I'm struggling with is I don't well, see a force thing I was thinking is uh, if, if you don't make the swap for property that is contiguous that you can use, it, is the county considering surplus in the piece of property that we don't have any future plans for? And if we do, are we able to get enough money out of that to buy a piece of property if that's what the county wants to do or put it towards some other good purpose? I'm not sure right now it's going to be selling real estate for us. Because you don't get um, good market value for it, so uh, I guess I'll, I'll be wondering. Uh, we don't need that other piece of property that, that they want to swap for. Is that something the county would want to surplus to sell to them or anybody? But you'll probably be lucky or, enough to get enough of that to buy the other anyway. Decide not to, not to do since you was value your value. Well, well, in, in real estate right now, if you're buying, you're a winner. If you're selling, you're a loser. <laughs> if you buy and sell, you're you're you're. Level. That's what I'm saying. If you so if if swap, both, if, if you swap in two pieces, if, if, you're, if you're the tax value is about the same, it's sort of six one half a dozen the other. Yeah, I mean, but I guess I keep going back, and, and again, I'm I'm in. If I lose this one, I lose it. That's fine. It's no big deal. Sure. But my point would be, what's the rush? 
the only people that are in a hurry. I mean, we've had that. Pro I, I have no attachment to that property. I don't even know when it was bought. I wasn't there. But at the same time, it is an asset. And if I'm going to trade a county asset, I would like to trade it for an equivalent asset. And I and I just can't bring myself to say that that's an equivalent asset. If I had a plan, a burning plan on a piece of paper right now, ready to go, saying we need to go out here and get Lewis Penland to start grading and we want to expand that parking lot right now today, we were willing to throw the money at it to do that. If we had that plan, then we have a forcing function to make this swap. But the fact that we can't sell the property in the existing economy, Roger that. But we haven't had the we haven't been able to sell it for a while. So and we, and we didn't get rid of it. Exactly, we haven't tried because there's no need to try. Okay, and so what I'm saying is I don't see the forcing function. I guess that's a, a, a bad military word, but I don't see the forcing function to this trade. I mean, other than she wants to and we've got the property. But to me, that's a forcing function if it's an even swap. And like I said, in my yeah. humble opinion, it's not an even swap, even if it is accessible, it's not even. And so. That's my hand. But I, I live with the pleasure uh, of the Lord and we'll let you know. The last will. comment I'd make is this. If somebody else were to purchase that other piece, not the piece we own, the piece we don't, right? Well, then that shuts the door to expanding to expand the parking or whatever else you might do with that property is, that already touches two sides of what we own. It shuts that side off. But if that was imminent, she wouldn't be talking about it. This property also joins Buck Creek Road down there at the bottom, don't no, no, it drove no, up to the access road. There, there's I another know where the access road is. But there's is another, there's, there's, there's a little, little, there's there's little map, but, but there's yeah, another the piece. Last sheet there. Yeah, there's, there's, yeah, there's, yeah, there's another piece that may become available literally 20 years or something from now. There's a bunch of people that own it, uh, family, and who knows what, what, you know, when that piece might become available. That piece right there. Yep. I'll put it to you this way. I don't think any of us will be here. But but I mean that piece could become available, like I said, twenty years from now. But that piece doesn't do you much good if you don't own this piece. When you already own this piece, it touches that on two sides. So that you know, it just so I guess you make good sense. I'm not I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just, no, I mean it's just it's fine. Well, uh I didn't this is all from Mr. Chairman of Wood. I, I I'm not sure who was on the board then, but when the option came due for the arrest of the property that the county actually did purchase, the county, I think at that time, made an offer to spot even lot for lot, and they turned it down at that time for whatever reason. Or they would swap, I think you mentioned earlier. If the county About another 200 grand did swap. They wanted to swap, swap the 160 grand. Now they, and we right. said no. And then they yeah. come back yeah. since and said, well, we'll do it even more. So it comes to the realization years that we had. Yeah, well, to me, that piece is valuable to the county, but it's not as valuable as it was before we built the soccer field. It wasn't where True we, enough, but we are where we are. Yeah. And that's my point. We are where we are. If I needed that for a soccer field, then we would not be having this discussion and I wouldn't be sitting here trying to convince well, you differently. Yeah. But the simple fact is we have a new soccer field. We don't have a forcing function to, to, to get that property and therefore I don't think it's an even swamp. But that's just me. I'm sorry. I've said that three times. I'm going to say it. I kind of see it your way, Bobby, but I went up there and looked at it. And got to, uh, look, I don't know. It's pros and cons both ways. Sure. Mm -hmm. That's why it's in the but, I'm like, yes, the right. other, one other. There's, there's probably one other aspect. That right now, the property that the county owns, if that's the best piece of property, we're not collecting any taxes on. Roger that. Yeah. But when you trade it, if they're the same tax value, you're right back where you were. So, and you don't have all the property that you could use in the future. So it, it's still you know, it's still apples to apples as far as money. Whether you're talking about tax mm -hmm. value, yeah. whether you're talking about selling it for, and if we're going by what's going out there, would it be worth 50 percent of? Tax value, maybe then it would be yeah, fifty percent. The other be I mean, yeah, what's well, not, not apples to apples is developability. Developability, yeah. but right, it's, it's not. The, apples. Well, the, it's there's three level. other parcels right. of the land you'd have to buy to connect that. There's three other parcels of the land you'd have to buy. To Wouldn't you just have to buy that little pie shaped part? <coughs> it, it, it was our property. This is what we own here. We don't own this, this, or this. 
We don't own Stauffer, Waller, or Wilson. Yeah, we don't. Own it. We'd have to buy three more pieces of property. Yeah, you just have to buy one. <coughs> yeah, but I mean, I'm just saying. But, I'm not saying we're going to do that, Brian. I'm just saying you yeah. only have to buy one, and you'd have access to it, and you got to ride away to get to it anyway. So yeah, we have access but, to that. But right. generally, when you have a park, the land's continuous. You don't have a piece over here. You walk down the road to get to, and a piece over here. Well, yeah, but you still got access. Mr. Chairman, not to not yeah, we don't land we can, point. We can, not that we can talk about it all night. Right. Right. Can, can I make one suggestion? Absolutely. And since there's attorney, could can I make a motion that we that we table this decision again, and that uh, I would like to come up. I've not got had a chance to sit with another commissioner, and I'd like to have that opportunity, at least with you, Mr. Chairman, or with Mr. Cuppers or somebody, to look at his. I did look at it, but the more I hear talk, maybe I should look at it closer. It's hard to get a windshield view because it was pouring rain today. I went out there and I, I, know, I, and I might melt. So, no. uh, <laughs> I rest. so I, I would. So, Mr. Chairman, if you'd entertain a motion that, that we table this to have, uh, does any of have? I'd like to have just for my benefit. I'd like to go out there with another commissioner and look at. I'll, I'll go with you. Okay, I'd love to do that. Okay, and we and get with some parties involved in yeah. So we got a motion to table. We I have a second. second. All right, so we got a motion to second to table. So so we'll just table this until we won't say indefinitely. But you guys yeah. You know, yeah. 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 yeah, I'd like I'd like to just take the it. not a windshield look, but a closer look. Table. 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 You haven't had a chance, right? I've done. No, so we'll, we'll, we'll take a look. We'll take a day trip. You gave me a No, I you got it. I passed the stupid. I got a credit card. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have to. All right. <laughs> Talking about eating hot ones. Okay, item 9C. Uh, we want to receive the construction family. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. Recognize the commission. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, as been fairly well publicized in, in, the, in their local media, the uh, land board. Uh, had decided not to proceed with the uh, slope standards, and and, and uh, they did uh, meet, uh, I believe, a couple times after that, Mr. Chairman, twice more, and they have come uh, with, uh, they have proposed construction standards, and then also as part of that, I believe, as part of your document, you include the definitions, which uh, I think uh, we talked about. So it, that's a fairly short document. There's seven uh, final recommendations. Um, and I think everybody's received a copy. If, if not, it's in your box. But they, that has been received. My my recommendation would be that, that we that we acknowledge this, that we receive it, and give commissioners a chance to to review that and, and discuss that, and then go do whatever we need to do after that. And if I might put it on the put it on the October, just so we can. So for, for discussion, discussion, for discussion. If, for if discussion. everybody's not had a chance to read it, I don't because think we may want to we may want to get some people here to ask some questions of them. Like we that. may want to. To look at it at a different, you know. We may want to do that. See some of the talks on the people probably exactly. work right. Exactly. So I would, I would just suggest that we, we acknowledge receipt mm -hmm. of this, and uh, put it on the agenda for our next meeting, mm -hmm. if that's okay, Mr. Cuppers. Uh, uh, absolutely. And I'd just like to thank the Planning Board, the Chairman, for representing here tonight. And Lewis, some other you, let me recognize here. you. Do you have anything to say? No, Derek or Derek. But I want to thank you for your work. I want to thank you for the effort. I want to thank you for having a discussion. I know that'll make the paper. I want to thank you for having <laughs> a discussion. Sure. Uh, now what's, the, figured what's, have, it, what's the other thing you say? Have the discussion. It, was that it? Is that your that's it. And then I said finish the job and that's where I got in trouble. But anyway, uh, <laughs> we want to have the discussion and we've had it. And, and I, want to, I want to thank the planning board for doing that. Uh, I want to thank you for your patience because you had the patience to Job at times. Uh, but I want to thank you for your patience. I want to thank you for your hard work. And uh, it's on to the next one. It never ends. Thank you, Lord, for your leadership. And and uh, on that board, we've been down that road before, and it just, it's worse from pulling teeth. So, uh, <laughs> worser? Is that a word? That's a word. That's a word on the call of safety. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Please don't quote that. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bill, I think not only can, <laughs> can Lewis relate to Job, he can also relate to Moses because it took Moses, you know, 40 years to get from Egypt to Canaan. And we were the last two and a half. And he, <laughs> we finally got there. Started out in the bull race. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we're moving on to new business. First item, 10A, amendment to the county road ordinance. Gentlemen, and I prepared for you the September 13, 2011 amendment to the Macon County Road Naming and Numbering System Ordinance here for codified as Chapter 14 of the Macon County Code. These are the road uh, additions, road name additions, or new roads, as well as the roads to be deleted, which are roads that are no longer in existence that uh, Ms. Uh, Kinsman advertised and spoke about during the public hearing. Okay, gentlemen, do we have a motion that we uh, accept this amendment to the county road naming and numbering order? So, second. We've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Well said. So, uh, they didn't name any new roads after any of you guys, so I can have That would probably be smart. So we got a motion and a second. So any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? The motion shows it here and now. Thank you, guys. All right, item 10A, certified statement regarding the Rural Operating Assistance Program that uh, Ms. Angel spoke to earlier. Item 10B. That's also, we just need to uh, have a motion on this resolution to approve. We would need to, as part of that motion, authorize uh, Chairman McClellan and County Manager Horton and uh, Ms. Southern Finance Officer to sign the same on behalf of him. Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to make that motion contingent upon uh, allowing the, Mr. Horton and yourself and Ms. Southers uh, formulating the, the process and uh, for our transit you know as we saw that from the statewide folks are here that our sta our transit system uh, is recognized uh, has been has come a long way and continues to improve under difficult conditions so I'd make the most we improve uh, with those stipulations we got a motion do we have a second Second. We've got a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? One thing I would like to add to that, uh, and Ms. Jordan spoke earlier and I would just, I think all of us understand, but just would just like to make a statement. The, the, uh, our rural transportation system has been taking yes. uh, dialysis patients over to Silva. It mm -hmm. needs to be said. So, so that <laughs> has been, be that, that has already been occurring. Absolutely. Uh, the other thing I would like to make mention of is that this dialysis center that Mr. Bills really worked hard on, that is private funding. The If the hospital, and, and we don't know that, first of all, if, if we get a resolution, they say yes, and the state has to approve that you can have one here, if the hospital thought it was profitable, they're they're free to, to have one. They've already had one. And, 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 and yeah, and, and, and it was not profitable, but if they're a private company that wants to come in and they think the numbers work for them, uh, it's not going to cost the county any money. That's right. And so yeah. it's a private enterprise, in fact it probably means job for the county. Yeah, I was gonna say. So uh, I just want to make sure that, that everybody understands that. Okay, moving on, item 10C, we scratched that, so item uh, 10D, consideration of classification and compensation study, 10D. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the board directed us to go ahead and start looking at uh, competent companies to do a classification pay plan after a budget work this year, and uh, after a lot of research and calling uh, for uh, referrals and Opinions of uh, companies who could do that. We, we, we ended up with one company we think that is probably the best uh, qualified to do that for us. It's called Springstead Incorporated. And they are a, a preferred provider for the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners. And actually, what it would be, it would be a contract through the County Commissioners Association where Springstead Corporation would actually come in and do our study. We'd actually pay the money back to the County Commissioners Association which we're members. Uh, I'd say that we, we checked and I talked to several counties uh, where this company has done work for them and all of them are extremely complimentary of them. Uh, the problem they got into, many of them were that uh, they didn't pass the <coughs> bank plan and weren't able to implement it because of uh, the recession in the economy. And so 
one of the things that this company would do, as we, Mike and I talked to them, is uh, whatever the recommendation comes out to be, to help us develop some kind of a way to implement that and uh, make it realistic and not just a document that's set on the shelf and gather dust. Uh, they are a preferred provider, and uh, you see from your uh, agenda information that the study would cost $29,550. It would cover all of our county employees, all departments, and they would have some expenses. They estimate not to exceed $3,600, so the total the entire study would be $33,150 if, uh, if the expenses come in as to what they plan. And the payment would not be made at once. It would be broken up into phases as they complete that. Uh, 7387 would be the initial payment. Uh, then uh, <coughs> the other two payments would be made uh, as, as the project uh, proceeds and is completed. Uh, they would not only do the classification pay plan for the basic salary, but it also consider benefits and additional pays, which don't always show up in compensation for employees. We want to make sure if we're comparing actual compensation, we're looking at not just salary, but all uh, benefits as well. Uh, they will uh, develop new job descriptions. Our job descriptions are out of date. Many of them are. Uh, it's been quite a few years. I'm thinking probably seven or eight years since the county did a comprehensive classification and pay plan study. So that would bring them all up to date and also make sure that our classifications were in compliance with the American with Disabilities Act and the Fair Labor Standards Act. Uh, they would also uh, train our HR staff, all one of them, and uh, <laughs> that was a joke, Mike. But uh, <laughs> they would help, help train our staff in order to update the plan. It's good to do a plan unless you have a system in place to keep the plan updated from year to year. Uh, and so they would they would do that. Uh, they would also uh, do a study including all the fringe benefits offered by the county. So we would have that, and we would able then be able then I think to do what we need to do is. Uh, uh, a benefit statement for all the employees at least once a year to show them what their total compensation is, not just the amount of money they receive on the paycheck. I, I think that's, that's, great. I, I think that's a great idea. idea. I, I get one of those from my company. I'm looking every year, I look at them and go, I don't think I like that much when you start. You know, it's amazing. You start adding up all the assets. They just remind me And the last thing we asked them to do is. Uh, uh, to help us look at it, uh, staff, the staffing analysis, uh, one of the things that you look at is that, uh, what's the proper classification for somebody to do this job and what's the proper uh, pay for that person to do that. The other one is how many people does it take to do it effectively? Not too many or not too few. And so they will give us a uh, not a full blown in depth analysis of a staffing study, but they will give us at least something to look at. That you can make some recommendations and some adjustments. Give you a good necessary. framework, is what you're saying. Give you the framework for, for doing that and take a look. If there's something obvious, that'll let us know that uh, our staffing pattern is out of line in a particular department, which would be very helpful for, yeah. for all of us. Spencer, how, what's the time frame we're looking at? This uh, September, January. September, September, uh, yeah, 100, mid January. Mid January. Can you read your project? Project? There it is. If I could read, I'd know that. Well, we know, uh, Mr. Chairman, that this is something we've talked about for years. To, to really to do a really comprehensive study and to see if to see where we're at with our employees that that's provide a service <coughs> to our citizens. So I know that it's probably not the best time in the world to be spending an additional thirty three grand, but you know, when you look at the compensation levels and, and where we're at and I think that I think this is something that can be used for years to come. I think this is not just a one shot deal but it's gonna be put out there and I think it's I think it's, I would certainly like to see it. I'm sure the county manager would too. And I've talked to some of these counties. It's not this particular firm that does some studies and and uh, found out that they can adjust some. They can give a, they can adjust some the other way too. It's not always in the, yeah, I, where you raise. And, so. and I, 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 Ms. Southern might could tell us, but I don't know when this has last been done for Macon County. I came back to work in 2005, so and we have not had one since that. So probably three or four years prior to that. Right. So we've probably been close to that decade since mm -hmm. we've done that. Yeah. And 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 one of the purposes of doing this is, is for se there's several levels. One, so that department heads can have a level of confidence that we're paying competitive 
uh, salaries and wages uh, to our employees, two, for the taxpayers to understand uh, that we're paying competitive wages, we're not overpaying, we're, we're paying competitive wages that the money's been spent wisely. And and uh, so th those are the two two main pieces to it, and also it gives county manager confidence when we're looking to fill positions, uh, what is a competitive <coughs> salary for our area, and, and it doesn't really leave anything to chance. And, and uh, uh, I know personally, speaking on a personal level, it gives me a whole lot more confidence uh, when we're doing our budgets and somebody, uh, you know, thinks an employee should make this, that, or the other. Uh, when, we, when we can point to a, a very competent company doing a very in-depth study, I think it gives us a lot more confidence uh, as we talk about those issues with our county it gives a baseline and also gives a level playing field. That's, 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 that's what we're talking about. I mean, I'm going to, I might be a proponent for one department that may be that, that I'm partial to and and because of what they do. And so I think it would be, I think I think it would be a fair and equitable keeps way. Up, keeps up. Yeah, absolutely. I'll entertain a motion to enter into this agreement. So much. Second. We've got a motion and a second to enter into this agreement. Uh, all in pay, uh, with with uh, Springstead, uh, and they are a preferred provider, and they've done work before for a lot of other counties and state, and and uh, they're a preferred provider of the NCACC, which is a pretty good endorsement in my book. And so uh, we got a motion to second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. That the record shows. You can you say it's fine. Oh, you can take a break. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All, right. <laughs> All right, we'll take a five-minute break. <laughs> no, I don't think we have it on there. I'd do it. I'd do it under uh, new, new business. Well, we have Mr. I'd do it under new business, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Okay. IJ. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're doing on the Thank you. We just had it. Yeah. We, need a we need a motion to add that. Again, since motion at the first time. You want to make a motion? Yeah, I'm having a motion. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Uh -huh. uh -huh. I can't say that. Yeah, I mean, that worked, Mr. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, I mean, we could, I, well, I mean, actually, I mean, we could just announce it and yeah, do the 48 hour thing, too, yeah. but just make it simpler since everyone's here. Okay, moving right along, item 10, uh, E, release of the sewer easement, and, and I'm going to do 10 F, too, because they kind of, I'll let <coughs> our manager speak to both, but they kind of, in an odd way, fall together in some sense. No, they I, I think it's fair to explain that. 10, 10 E is uh, <coughs> Ramsey, uh, Ramsey easement. Just to give you a little background. The original plan for the Cartoon J. Little Tennessee River sewer uh, uh, in, involved going all the way up the gravity flow up the Captain Valley and then coming back around to the industrial park. Over the years, that project's been going on for about 10 years now, so over the years that part of the project was eliminated and replaced by a force main that went up a part of the way on Roller Mill Road to the Ramsey property. And then, and then the force main goes up Roller Mill Road, which is already installed, up to uh, the Fort Wayne Highway next to the Kmart Shopping Center and follows the highway up to the industrial park. The, uh, the easement that the uh, county had gotten originally from the Ramses was for the gravity sewer at a different location on the property following the creek. This one is closer to the road, and so we basically need, they've agreed to go ahead and give us a new easement for the new, for the new sewer line goes. But in turn, they, they would like for the county to release the old easement to take that off the books. And so that's basically, uh, in a nutshell, what we're asking the board to consider. Just asking that it uh, be declared surplus and abandoned and a quick claim deed authorized for it. I've prepared a resolution as well as a proposed quick claim deed to do that. Do we have a motion for the release of So moved. Okay. We've got a motion. We have a second. Second. Okay. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. I, I said E and F. I meant E and F and G. G. Mr. <coughs> Manager, on the number two, uh, do all the uh, yeah. kind of discuss those. Mr. Chairman, as you're well aware, 
and I'm sure uh, Mr. Bill is and, and other commissioners are that the county for some time had a lease uh, the rec, uh, rec park uh, in Nana Hale which basically consists of a ball field, small buildings, some fishing tables, a horseshoe pit and so forth, yeah. and also a little basketball area, tennis court, and, and a little uh, convenience center. That was a 10-year lease that expired several years ago and hasn't been renewed. And uh, at, at one time, the county was considering making a substantial investment on that property. And what the county basically had was a 10-year lease if that lease was renewed. But it's pretty much a 90-day option for the uh, power company to say, we need the property back. And so over the past uh, couple of years, we've been trying to uh, get the power company to work with us on either transferring that property to the county uh, so the county would have it from now on for a recreation purposes for the Nanahale area or give us a long-term lease. Uh, they've agreed to a 40-year lease and the county attorney has worked with the attorney from Duke Power and we've also worked with some local folks here uh, to get that worked out uh, to make sure that the county could uh, safely enter into a 40-year lease without a, a a quick option to cancel that lease um, and uh, you would have it for for a good, a good ways in the future in case the county wouldn't make any substantial investment on that property. It's about 17 and a half acres. The tract of land is bigger than that but part of it is unusual because it goes down and part of it's in the, uh, part of it's in the water and it goes across on the other side. But the usable area of the property up there is about 70 and a half acres. Uh, Attorney Jones may have some other information he wants to share with you on that. But basically what we have tonight is a, uh, a, a lease we feel very comfortable with, the county entering into, uh, actually for a dollar a year for the next four years. Actually less than that. Less ten, than a dollar Ten dollars. Well, I do have some obligations with respect to the taxes, so uh, they're but that, I think those are things that, uh, for the for what you're what you're getting, it's yeah. quite good. And the power companies agreed to all the provisions the county came up with. We had to make substantial changes to the original uh, agreement, and they've agreed to that now. And uh, I think the recommendation, at least for me, and I'm sure with the attorney, is that the board would favorably consider approving this lease because it's uh, been approved. Uh, just not been signed by the power company. Gentlemen, I will say that uh, there was a lot of heavy lifting done on this this uh, lease agreement long before I started doing any work for the county. Uh, former county attorney, Ms. Moxley, had worked uh, on this lease and had uh, negotiated hard with uh, with the with Duke Energy. There remain three or four issues that were outstanding, and uh, with uh, Mr. Horton's assistance, I think we got through those issues that he was concerned about. Uh, the board does need to understand that uh, Duke Energy does have some um, some room to work uh, with the with the county in the event that uh, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Uh, <coughs> requires them to use some portion of this piece of property for uh, the hydroelectric project out there either at this uh, current licensing <coughs> or in the new one. Uh, the, the, when I say the new licensing that would be probably 30 years hence because they're contemplating a 30 year lease or a license this time around. Uh, I will say um, the language as it came in that regard, uh, uh, the Duke Energy was willing to work with us on some things that we needed in that language or that Jack wanted in that language and and uh, I want to thank both Fred Alexander as well as uh, Carol Mack, the Associate General Counsel at Duke Energy for working closely with the county to address the county's issues. Mr. Uh, Chairman, I will say that this has been four years, over four years, that we've worked on this. And this is a totally different tune than our original meeting. <coughs> I mean, it ain't even on the same page. That was Duke Power. You can't, you can't, uh, 
what this lease reads from what the original lease read uh, <coughs> is very this this does go back in the county's favor we have invested taxpayer dollars there and uh, it has took a long time and I'd like to thank our council uh, he made it sound like he didn't have nothing to do with this which is totally totally false he's made a false <coughs> hook here tonight uh, <laughs> So uh, I, 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 I had what, the file, and, and I there know was what the lease was, and I know the status of it when uh, Mr. Jones took it over. So does the county manager. We thank you very much, Mr. Jones, for you used to call the other part heavy lifting. The lifting might have been heavy, but it hadn't went no far. So it's very important to the to the citizens. I think, Mr. Cooper, this is your district that we get this. <coughs> uh, because it had been in limbo for a long time. So thank you, Mr. Manager. And uh, Mr. Jones, thank you so much. Yeah, on, on behalf of the people of Mount Hill, it's been nice for them tonight. We really appreciate the effort that you've done. And Mr. Chairman, on behalf of those folks, I'd like to uh, make a motion that we uh, accept this uh, resolution. And uh, I guess, do I need a motion to allow y'all to complete the lease? Actually, I've got it contained in the, okay, in the so resolution, I'd like to, yes. And I'd like to make a motion we accept this resolution concerning the lease of the Manhattan. Second. Second. Right, we've got a motion in the second. You can get the picture in the second part of the mic. Okay, all in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? And I, w I would like to say, that although this might sound cryptic, uh, I appreciate the uh, county manager and the attorney uh, taking uh, uh, being aware of other things we got working with that, that we think allowed it gave us a little bit of uh, uh, or at least maybe I can say gave Duke a little bit of impetus to uh, agree to finally agree and move forward which uh, uh, I'm not sure if that would happen otherwise but thank you guys very much for, for realizing what our situation is and uh, Kind of interesting how fast you can get somebody to move on something they've dragged their feet on for years and years <clears throat> when they want something from you. So uh, I appreciate you guys uh, exactly being, right. being, uh, being up front and helping us out with that. So thank you very much. The next item is uh, 10 uh, G, the uh, right of way agreement with uh, Duke Energy, Mr. Manager. I think, Mr. Chairman, uh, this, is, this is one of the things that we're working on in conjunction with the downhill lease. Duke is rebuilding, trying to rebuild their line around uh, their transmission line, and they had to make some minor adjustments to their uh, uh, to their uh, right away agreements. Uh, and it's very, very little, uh, if any, negative effect on the county. As a matter of fact, it's probably a benefit. Probably a benefit to the county, especially where the power line comes across the uh, ball field. The first one on the left that you come to before you get to the rec center. They'll actually move that power line away from the buildings, which will be which will be a benefit that's down there. They're going to have to encroach a little bit uh, on the backside next to the greenway to make sure they have enough room for uh, guy wires for the towers. But they're also going to reduce the actual width of their easement uh, uh, from uh, 75 feet down to something less than that, I believe. Uh, anyway, it's a little less, a little more narrow than it was before. So this is a benefit in order to allow Duke to uh, rebuild their transmission line around Franklin. Also, it benefits the, uh, the area of the Greenway and also the Red Park. And uh, we would recommend that the board uh, consider there, the there are two of those right-of-way agreements and releases. Uh, they, what they're essentially doing is realigning, as the county manager said. In one uh, one of these, uh, they will pick up. Um, let me don't, I'm tell you wrong. It's precious little additional land is is the point I want to make to you on one of them. <clears throat> the net difference is uh, zero point zero eight two <coughs> acres or less than a tenth of an acre. Uh, and on the other, again, precious little difference um, goes from the net difference is 0 0.073 acres as per the plan. 
this easement would allow them to replace the power lines around there now. Primarily the, the, the poles, I think a lot of them are, if they're not all of them, are wooden poles and they would replace those with more substantial support for their power lines. And the bottom line is, Mr. Chairman, this wood, you know, this power line has always been across that ball field. Right. Uh, and I hit you. And the land that the bill property, I think the county will agree that the little extra is not, is not usable for up for the county in no way. So I, did, I did look at the road, the right of way, and the change, and uh, it's a uh, it's benefit to the county. Okay, uh, I would uh, entertain a motion uh, as to uh, having the county enter into two uh, right of way agreements and releasing the Duke Energy, Car Energy Carolinas and to make slight changes that have just been. Uh, discussed uh, and also to authorize appropriate Macon County officials to, to do so on behalf of, behalf of Macon County to execute the appropriate documentation uh, also for Macon County. In this case it would be uh, Brian McClellan and uh, Jack Horton signing those and I would ask that you uh, request that as part of your motion a copy of each of these documents be attached to the minutes. I have a motion. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Let the motion show the period unanimously. The next item on our agenda is a resolution encouraging the citizens of Macon County to observe uh, Firefighters Week in North Carolina. Um, I'd ask that this uh, be brought back up, and, and I know we're all in agreement, but I'll read this. It's, it's pretty short. It's a resolution encouraging the citizens of Macon County to observe Firefighters Week in North Carolina. Whereas fighting fires is one of the most hazardous professions requiring physical strength, stamina, extensive training, courage, and self, uh, selfless concern for the welfare of others. Uh, whereas firefighters provide valuable services to the citizens of Macon County and their individual communities. Whereas firefighters make sacrifices to protect the lives and financial interests of the citizens of Macon County. And where firefighters respond to emergencies without hesitation when the call of duty arises. And where firefighters work with public safety officials and law enforcement officers to protect the integrity of crime scenes, which is necessary to resolve arson cases. And where firefighters reside in the community in which they serve and have a great appreciation for protecting their communities. Whereas it is appropriate to recognize the duties and services that firefighters perform by observing Firefighters Week in North Carolina. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Board of Commissioners for the County of Macon as follows that the Board of Commissioners believes that all firefighters deserve to be honored for their invaluable service they provide to the state, Macon County, its citizens and communities, and encourages the citizens of the county to observe the week of September of each year containing September the 11th as Firefighters Week in North Carolina. Adopted this 13th day of September 2011. Do we have a motion to accept that resolution? So moved. We got a motion, second. we have a second. We got a motion and a second. All in favor, please <coughs> signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Ladies Just one little footnote. We heard a report this morning. I think your Jimmy can correct me if I hear it said wrong, but uh, there was a fire alarm this past week at a medical facility. The call came in with the same words as just the call came in at Asheville. But this call was in Macon County where the firefighter in Asheville lost his life. This was the same the same verbiage that was called in that was called in in Asheville. And uh, thank goodness that it was, we had a whole different result. There wasn't a whole lot to the call. But so at any time... <coughs> Uh, that's just a reminder close to home of what can happen. So, and, and as uh, Ronnie said before, and I totally agree with, I know we all do, uh, our volunteer fire department uh, and firefighters across the county are, are absolutely probably the best thing for the buck we get in bar none. Okay. okay, we'll move on to item 10i, community funding pool. Um, Bobby and I are the liaisons to the community funding pool and uh, this has been being worked on for a while. There are two sheets of paper. You'll see them stapled together. Everybody have that. Um, the, uh, the top one 
as you can look at, they had uh, $50,000 in our budget that, that we approved to go into this. And I believe this is, uh, there's 10 people on the on this committee. Miss Mary Ann Sloan's the chairman. Bob and I met uh, yesterday with, uh, with them and, and uh, this was her recommendation. You'll notice that uh, they wanted to put uh, basically kids place in reach. Um, funded it the full amount they asked to, then they used a formula. If, if you flip over to the second page of that, um, these, these are all the organizations that, that applied for funding, the amount of their request. They had a, a formula that they used uh, to determine that, uh, eligibility as far as their, their opinions as far as these uh, groups. Um, they had 107 if you look in the first column, they're about on the same page there. They had $107,780 in requests. When they ran it through their formula, they came out with 55,388, which is uh, which is more than than is in that fund. So what we had them do, or they did do, they they went back, sort of made a decision on the 50,000, <coughs> decided to keep uh, kids' place and reach it at 10. And they basically took the others down uh, a pro rata amount. We, we figured close to ten, it's close to ten to twelve percent less than what they were requesting, except for kids' places. But and not just they were requesting one hundred seven and seven eighty, but well, they requested fifty five. Right, right fifty five three eighty eight is what they requested after their formula. Right. So we present that to you, gentlemen. Uh, what we talked about. We, we recognize that the budget being what it is, and we recognize that 50, basically $5,400 is a lot of money. What we would like you to consider, and I just want you to consider a couple things when we talk about the community funding pool. I wasn't here when it was created. I was, might have been physically in Bacon County, but obviously wasn't here. It's been about 10 years. It's been about 10 years. And when it was originally funded, the amount of money 10 years ago put into the community funding pool was $50,000. And over 10 years, the amount of money put in the community funding pool has stayed at $50,000. One of the things the community funding pool is supposed to prevent is the onesie in between budget cycles thing. And, and the simple truth is that right now at the funding level of 50,000, we are setting ourselves up for dealing with that. We're gonna deal with those on one, on one case by case basis. We didn't feel it was appropriate to ask for the 5400 above their budget. We recognize we worked on the budget too and we know how tight it is. What we wanted to ask you to consider tonight, Kevin's got the number, is meeting them halfway from 50,000 to 55,388. In other words, that number would be 52,694. And then what I'd like you to keep in the back of your mind is the potential in the next budget cycle to look at perhaps plussing up community funding pool so that we don't end up with a half a dozen to a dozen onesies as the year goes along. Yeah. That's, that's, that's downstream. What we'd like you to consider is not the 55,388, but 52,694, which is halfway between what we funded and what they requested. For your consideration. I've got one question, more of a curiosity question than anything. Um, all these other ones I'm, I understand. What's the Angel Medical Center? I mean, I know what it is, but... That is the, uh, okay, the... I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how, what, what would they be applying for community funding? Like everything the else... The lady's not out program? Is that the one we're talking about? Is that about? what it is? Yeah. Okay. It's okay. on the okay. second that's page. The lady's not out program. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, okay. Yeah. Oh, that's where I want. Okay. It's on the second page, Brian. Yeah. Oh, okay. If okay. you look on the, and that really is the page you probably should This really at. describes it for you. This is where the yeah. numbers are. Ignore the zeros. I had the same question, Brian. I'm a numbers guy. And I saw the zeros out from Reach and, and uh, Kids Place, and I went, well, wait a minute. They got no score, and they get full funding. That's the reason. Which, which they, bring, they don't compete against Well, if you look at what was requested and what was not requested, and this is a sign of the times, too, the money that's been requested and that you all are recommending goes directly to help people. Absolutely. And that, that was the other thing I wanted to mention is they, they, they went away from it. It's clearly direct aid to people in the county to try to make their lives better. It's not, I mean, let's face it, the historical societies, the museums, they took the hit because the money needs to go to help real yeah. people in crisis right now. And that's what they looked at when they, when they scored it. Interestingly enough, they all 10 scored independently. 
and then they all come together and it's a very diverse group and that's what the averages came out and then they all looked at it they said yep that that's where it means and that's how they came up with the feature 5388 and something bobby and i've talked about privately is that we should consider if you, if you notice that there's two items that i think everybody universally that they unanimously agreed needed to be funded at f the full request that's kid play kids place and reach and those are two things that that uh, that affect every citizen of Macon County, either directly or indirectly. So, and unfortunately, at Commissioner Corbett, uh, the demand on both of these continues to grow at a alarming rate. We discussed that. The demand on all these things, that and that's a lot of these things that are listed. Bobby and I discussed the possibility, and, and Jack, you can help guide us on this. But next year, if if the feeling of that group and the feeling of this group is that those are groups that, that we should fund at their request, perhaps we should take them out of this community funding pool. Since they're a given, it, you and know, fund them directly. And, and fund those as a as a. Uh, well, those programs that have been funded typically at a, at a set amount each year uh, because of their, their vital to the county, like kids' place, and, and that we do have one or two other small programs right. that are funded, like our senior services program. They're going to go through the funding pool, but without that money, without those jobs senior citizens group. Right. And so we, we put that as a regular line. We don't want to get away from from the, the community funding pool. Not, no, sir, not at all. What we're saying, Jack, is if you're always going to take that $20,000 off the top, right. wouldn't it make more sense to line item that money and then everybody else competes for whatever and, money you decided. And we talked about the fact that this, this fund had not been increased since, and I don't think since anybody has exception. an exact date, but since not, maybe 98 or 2000, uh, that had it been had it been increased a little bit, and of course we've done decreases the last four years. We all understand that, but this would be higher. So if we took if we took the ten and the ten out, and made those separate line items and kept that funding at fifty, then you could fund some of these a little closer to their requests and maybe. And some of these programs come and go, and, and I think that's probably a focus of this because you have a lot of things that are very successful one year and right. they don't come yeah. back again. Right. But there's exactly. other priorities within the community and you have some flexibility on and, there. And here's the other thing, those those two things too, if you look at it, and you're exactly right, have have stood the test of time a little bit. Kids Place has been around uh, I want to say fifteen plus years. Um, and so is Reach. So that's that's the thought for Just next the we're thought, not recommending we're not that recommending now. now. The only thing we'd like you to consider now is bumping it to 52 we're asking you for another two thousand six hundred ninety four dollars and thirty nine cents for the community funding plan. Yeah. we don't get it if the board is the board does not see fit to do that that's fine this when okay. we will turn around and ask you to well you don't have to approve it i guess no. we just and that's why we gave you both we're okay yeah. whatever you guys want to do Let, but if i can make just one quick comment <clears throat> uh, i think we've talked about this in prior years uh, and, and you're right Mr. Corbett, we, we, we have never, we never raised it, but we, we didn't cut it either. Right. When we came well, I did have to explain the Cuppers Amendment last year when we took 500 <laughs> It was, it was 49 They were really happy to get that back, okay. so. <laughs> having, having said that, there, there, to, to me, there are two important pieces. I don't know about taking these other ones out. I mean, that's for a budget discussion, and we'll, we'll do that in due right. time. If we want to entertain raising this because we think it's appropriate, uh, I certainly would be willing to think about doing that um, and, and one of the reasons why, why this the volunteers do a tremendous job you know on, I mean they've got a great system I believe they try and do it in a very fair and impartial way having said that one of my reasons that I would consider raising it is because we really really do not want to get in a position of onesies twosies coming before the board and, and trying to have the board decide you know who's who is worthy and who's not. It's hard to say no. You can't do that. It's really, it's very much. Really. Well, and you have to look at the original. Be with you, they do, I'm just telling it like it is. They do a much better job than we would do. Absolutely. Well, they spend a lot of time with this because of the process. And the only so reason Bobby and I recommended right maybe meeting them in the middle it is because of that. Because we feel like they really did a good job. The 55. 38878 is an odd figure because they didn't just pick that out of the air and say $55,000. They actually used a formula. They went through, they independently, each of them evaluated these programs, and that's the figure they came up with. They'd like to have 55388, but. So that being said, Mr. Chairman, well, 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 go ahead. I, I, I was just the only thing I was going to say. <laughs> well, no, you, I'm, I'm done. No, and all, all I would say is the, the other reason we asked for this is because of the increased demand on these, on these groups at this point in time. 
So if with with uh, uh, I'd like to make a motion that we that we uh, authorize in it. Fifty-two thousand six hundred ninety-four dollars and thirty-nine cents total for the community funding pool, pool to be distributed. As you see, and what they'll do is they'll take that fifty-five three eighty-eight and their percentages and prorate that down. And where do you propose the money to come from? It's going to have to come from the I just want that money. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sorry. I should have said that. That's right. Mr. Mr. Chairman, before you vote on that motion, we discovered one other item that was overlooked yeah, in the budget this year. Yeah. And, and uh, whatever the board wants to do, if you want to do the full, you know, 5500 that's fine too. But when we discovered and looking back through uh, some of the budget on special appropriations this year, if you recall last fall, the board approved unanimously to make a contribution to Web for Enterprises yeah. for our uh, handicap uh, program over there. And there was a commitment made at that time by the board to appropriate another $10,000 <laughs> in, in the next year's budget. But during our budget process, we failed to put that other ten thousand dollars in there. Is that correct, Evelyn? We did. I'm not sure that. I, th I think what what was said at the time they did the original ten thousand was to bring that into consideration during the budget process, not well, necessarily actually, to commit actually, to that. Actually, I looked it up and it said that it, it would be, but would be appropriate. We just got to clean it up this year. We 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 You actually agreed. I wanted to make sure of that I went back and looked at the minute books and it says the motion did. Ten thousand dollars and then another ten thousand dollars in next year's budget. I thought it, I thought it, we were on the impression we were considered and we were looking for nickels and dimes to save, and we didn't put it back in there. But uh, I think the board had made a commitment last spring to do that, and it, it's a special appropriation. And I do I do have the minutes if you want to read it, but uh, uh, if, if you're going to if you're going to uh, amend the, this one special appropriation for the community funding pool for the great programs they do here in the county and I, I would fully support and recommend you do that. I'd like you also consider uh, allowing us to make a budget amendment to fulfill the obligation the board made last spring to our, our citizens, our handicapped citizens on that program. Yeah, I think you, right. want motion, you, want you want to amend the motion? I'll yeah. be happy to amend the motion. Yeah. And they were made a commitment. Commitment to commitment. You second. Gonna, did you say I didn't. I didn't, but I will. How about so, so, uh, I uh, so the total now becomes ten thousand two hundred sixty-two thousand twelve thousand six hundred ninety-four dollars and thirty-nine cents. Two thousand six ninety-four thirty-nine to the funding pool and ten thousand. Uh, uh, unless, and I don't, I don't know why I should say this, unless you want to fund the full request of the fifty-five instead of half of the, the increase between fifty and fifty. No, I think uh, I think we're asking for a lot as it is, and I'd really rather not that push that. With okay. total of 12, and the other ten, we apologize for not, not funding. No, I, I, I think we've, that, uh, we already agreed. we've already we've already agreed with the funding pool that we would not ask for the full amount. They understand it, but, but I think but, that's the right way. But I think as far as the bookkeeping, just so we're kind of straight, that the ten thousand for the handicap that shouldn't be a part of the funding. No, 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 no that's, that's not that's a part of that's that's a separate special appropriation. But if you want it, you know, if you want it, it's too much of an appropriation. <laughs> But uh, just 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 for the record, following the discussion, one motion by Commissioner Bill, second by Commissioner Cuffer, the board vote unanimously to provide Web Enterprises ten thousand dollars from the current year contingency fund and ten thousand dollars from the fiscal year 2011-12 budget. So forward. I think we we're made a commitment to that. We made so, a but we don't have it in the budget. If we're doing uh, amendments to special appropriation, I would like the board to consider allowing us to do that. I'm sure, we well, we got a, we got a motion and a second. Uh, uh, to do that, and, and so if, if, if we don't have any other discussion, if <coughs> hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Absolutely. Forty-five seconds of privilege. Uh, the county manager and myself today uh, endorsed. Uh, <coughs> was asked for our endorsement, and we did that. And I think we should report to the board. That we have a real opportunity to maybe get six uh, uh, juvenile psychiatric beds at the Boston Center. This is a fully granted program uh, for startup. This is be from ages from 12 to 18 that would handle uh, uh, anything from psychiatric needs to substance abuse needs. This would be the only, we do not have access to none of those. And this is one of the things we've worked on on the mental health side. So, uh, we were asked for letters today from myself and the county manager. Myself as representative on the LME and of the 
uh, and of the uh, health and human services. So this will be uh, decided upon Thursday, I understand. It's critical to have, the, have this, uh, these letters of recommendation support in tomorrow, so we, we have the time so to We're pushing this as a model that in the future, because as we all know, uh, you know on the mental health side, and, and this ties into kids' place, if you, if you go down and talk to the Alicia at the kids' place, if you don't not visit our, please do so. It's earliest convenience. Uh, this will give some of these children that's had some very traumatic experiences along with those who still suffer from substance abuse. I know six beds don't sound like a lot, but we, if this can be turned into a model, we will certainly <coughs> work hard to try to make that to help the kids of Macon County and, uh, and, and those there's just no treatment for these adolescents. So I just want to give, report that, that we did, you know, we said that the county was in support of that. And on behalf of myself and the county manager, we just want to give that report. And we'll we'll let you know how that comes out. That will be uh, that grant is for almost three hundred thousand dollars, and it will be uh, we think we have a strong case, and we hope that that comes through on Thursday. Thank you. Uh, moving on to uh, our last item in uh, new business is item ten J, which is to set a uh, schedule for a work session. Uh, this has to do with uh, <coughs> gathering the rest of the information we need to try and make an informed decision uh, regarding what our scheduling may be for our uh, next reval. And so, Jim, if you all look at your schedules, and and uh, I think we it's, it's kind of incumbent upon us, I believe, to do this sometime in September because depending on what our mm -hmm. uh, decision is, after we've looked at all the information and discussed it, uh, the uh, tax office will need to move forward in some form. Uh, I'm willing to entertain any, any time you guys want would you rather do it on a weekend, weeknight? You want, you want to do it in the evening? Or I'd, I'd rather do it in the evening. If it's possible, do it in the evening or weekend. Kevin, Wednesday, 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 what's your best night? It's not Wednesday. Monday to Thursday. Monday. And, uh, Monday to Thursday. Monday's your best night? Mon Monday is good to me. Thursday, Thursday yeah. is too. Monday or Thursday, guys. Uh, the 19th is next Monday. Yeah. Is that right? The 20. 26 is I, region. 26 got region. 26 is region. I can't. Uh, I can't do the 19th. Can't do the 19th. Oh, you got time on the 19th. I can't ever make my calendar pull up when I'm done. Yeah, yeah. 19th is Thursday. 22nd. I can do a thing. 22nd. 22nd. Look good. I can do a thing. What is that? What's that? Thursday. Thursday night. Thursday night. Thursday evening. Well, Thursday night football. Night. I think we can start. Well, there's Thursday night football game. Now. We started at, what time? Is, we started at 5 o'clock? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Because we're going to have, the reason I'm asking because we're going to have several from the county employees here. Yeah. 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 Start at 5 o'clock. I mean, I'll be here right at 5 just shortly after. So start at 5 o'clock. Just shortly after. some good information. PowerPoint presentation. Short background. Good. So we should be here. That's on the 22nd. Well, right. What was I can be back by five o'clock. I've got you do five thirty. Five thirty. Five thirty. Five thirty. Five thirty. Five thirty would help me. Five thirty. I got to be in Asheville. It helps me. I got to be in Asheville as chairman of the as the finance committee on that. Five thirty. Five thirty. Five thirty. Five thirty. I'll leave work four thirty. All right. So five thirty on Thursday. Five thirty on Thursday, September the twenty second. Is that right? Twenty second. My God. It is. We'll meet here, five West Main Street. You can just recess it at the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we'll, we'll, do, we'll recess it. There you go. Continuation. Bob Westminster. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner. And with with the uh, <laughs> and we can take up other items if we'd like to since we're recessing. Absolutely. But our, but our but our intent, unless something very pressing, is to is just to hold the, hold the agenda to the uh, rebound. Yeah. So I think it'll take us a good while to get through that. It will take a while. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Okay, uh, moving on, we'll go now to the consent of general. Gentlemen, in your package, you have that. If you take just a moment, if you haven't already. <laughs> we'll give you that at 5.30. 5.30. And I'll make sure I'll give it on Mr. Slope. Uh, we'll look over the minutes, if you haven't already. Uh, We don't have any uh, additions or corrections to the minutes. Chairman Lou, we approve. 
Oh, you gotta go. We'll, we'll you gotta do the whole. Oh, you're not doing that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, we'll go to budget revisions, Miss Southern. She's got some here plus two additions. Yeah, I have two to add. We take one, ah. one pack. Yeah. Yes. We'll do the additions first. I think most of you have those in your hand. Um, number 44 is to appropriate a $160,000 grant for our housing department single family rehabilitation program. Number 45 is to appropriate from fund balance $21,115 for transit that was money that was appropriated in last year, not spent, so it's a continuing contract in this year. Okay, now if you'll go to your agenda. Congratulations, by the way, uh, Mr. Manager, and every one of those of you that worked on it, and the folks that are uh, at, at housing for getting this. Not every county got the ability money, so thank you for you. For your work on that and the application that you sent in. Our folks do a good job. Sure do. Okay, if you go to your agenda number 238, that's a budget amendment that we need to do for the year ending June 30, 2011. We collected more occupancy tax than what we had originally budgeted, so we need to bring our budget up to the amount that we collected and the amount that we paid out. Then we get back into the new year, uh, 2012. Number 37 is to add $22,100 of grant money for Community Resource Center for Social Services. Number 38 is to appropriate additional uh, crisis funding for social services and a LEAP allocation of 46139 These are all um, state <coughs> Number 39 is to appropriate the balance that we have in the state and federal forfeiture money that comes through the Sheriff's Department. These are the balances that we had left at June 30, 2011. We need to carry those forward into the new year. Number 40. This is an additional grant that we received from, that the Airport Authority received from Department of Aviation to complete the runway extension project. The grant piece is $782,519. The match on that is eighty-six, almost $87,000. In the capital project fund, left over from grants that we've matched and did not expand all the grant, we've got $44,500 in the capital project fund that we can use toward the match for this grant. But we need another $42,447 to come from general fund to, to make that match. Do we not have that in the budget? No, we did not. What we put in the budget was $16,667 to match a $150,000 grant. So that's separate from this one. Okay, so this does, the 42447 does come out of our contention. Yes, it will. Okay. Yes. Number 41, if you remember, the Board of Education allocated $65,300 to the Nanahala uh, QZAP project, and then uh, we decided to use that for another purpose, so we just want to fix that budget to take that $65,300 out, and we can take it out of those individual line items. Number 42 is another housing grant. This is weatherization. Um, there, are, there are three revenue line items in this budget amendment that total $211,889. There's no county money in that. It's all uh, grant money. And that's all. Okay, then next we have the uh, uh, tax uh, releases. Mr. Manager, you want to do that? I think board members can have a chance to look at it. You can see most of these uh, releases are from the clerical adjustments. And they've been all reviewed and recommended by the tax assessor. Very good. There's also a uh, 
including some refunds, if I'm not mistaken, on there. And there's a refund on there, too. So. Four ones at the back. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. <coughs> okay, and then next we have approval of fee changes at uh, Major County Public Health. This is the important uh, calls uh, right before budget was adopted this year, uh, maybe about, about that time, uh, there was a recommendation from the health director and the board of health to uh, update the uh, fees charged by the health department, and the board uh, approved those at the time. After the county adopted the budget, the state uh, subsequently uh, adopted their budget, uh, we were notified. Uh, health director was notified by the State Department of Health and Human Services Division of Public Health that uh, they were changed if, if, if they were changing the reimbursement rates on Medicare Medicaid reimbursement and uh, this affects the amount of money the county is reimbursed and the health director is here and uh, can answer any questions you might have but uh, even though the, the board recommended, the health board recommended the county board adopt the new schedule. The state changed the uh, recommended uh, allocations to change the rules after you did that. And so we're faced with a problem. If you don't go ahead and amend the schedule that you approved in June this year, it will affect the amount of Medicaid reimbursement we get in next year's budget. Next year's budget, Jim. And uh, so the uh, the basic things that we looked at in construct it doesn't affect anything like environmental health or anything like that. These are uh, more specifically uh, clinical services. So if we don't charge more, we don't get more. So exactly. Uh, yeah. Basic bottom line is is that they they are changing the way we do a cost summary. We get reimbursed a flat rate, which is the Medicaid rate all year long. At the end of the year, they take our total cost of how we provided that service because. We provide a slightly different service than a normal physician practice does. It's an enhanced service. And they caught, they reimburse us based on that differential between what the Medicaid rate and our actual cost was, a percentage of that. They used to do it on a statewide aggregate. So they took all health departments across the state, put all of their fees into a pot, and you had some that were very inefficient, and some like most of the ones here in the West that are very efficient. and. Um, they said we're not going to do this aggregate cost settlement anymore and then prorate it to all health departments. They're going to do the cost settlements based on individual health departments. So what that means is $250,000 that we got last year, we may not get unless we redo our fees. The problem is we have to redo our fees in an efficient way in order to generate that cost settlement and, right. uh, and not cost the county an additional $250,000 this year that we're in right now. Some of these are pretty brutal. <laughs> some, some I mean, they are. I mean, I'm not blaming you. I'm just saying some of these are pretty brutal. Where, where they're pushing us is to <coughs> really DMA is driving it. It's not Division of Public Health, sure. it's Division of Medical yeah. System, sure. and Medicaid, yeah. and they're pushing us more, pushing public health more towards private provider rates is what's happening <laughs> in dental and in general clinical services. Jim, how did you and come up with? Did, did you set this, you went through and you, our we, department set these rates? We set these rates based off of what they do is at the end of the year, after they do the cost settlement, they send us an average cost per health department and then they send us what Macon County's cost should be based on that cost settlement. And even though we do things a little more efficiently than other departments, our costs, the reality of our costs is they are significantly higher. So I would, assume, yeah. I would assume then this could be right or wrong that the Bartoni antibody cat scratch that <laughs> so you you set that up higher because you probably don't have many of those probably don't have many of those. so the ones that's higher you set that higher but yet in hopes that that you don't have that many correct and that way you can still get the reimbursement that well no we have to have them to get the reimbursement so we have to have we have to see a patient for that problem in order to get the reimbursement for that problem to get that cost settlement um, but the ones you have the most of, I, the way I, if I can read these things, I don't know what a lot of this is, but the way I read it, the, the ones you have probably the most citizens come and see have the least amount of increase. Am I reading it right? No, they're, they're pretty equal. I mean, it's not a, it's, I mean, there are, some of them went up higher. The problem is that they're infrastructure driven. And 
In a private Can a practice, doctor read yeah. this? Yeah, which one was it? Can anybody in the health department read it? Yeah, which one are you talking about? I don't know any of them. I don't even know. <laughs> Some of them you don't want to say in public. <laughs> so Some of this <laughs> new point. Some of them went up like 150%. Some of them went up significantly. And it's because of what the, the way the state calculates. What they do is they take, we just went through it today for this year, actually. We just spent our whole morning working with folks from the state. They take all of our costs per program, and then they, they have a formula that they apply to those costs per program that takes it back to the cost per service within that program. We took that sheet that they gave us, looked at what we actually have invested in the program, like child health. We have, I, I don't know the exact dollar amount, let's say $80,000 invested in child health a year. If we only see 20 kids this year, that's a pretty hefty visit cost. If we only saw 20 kids and it costs 80000 <coughs> but it's because we're infrastructure driven. When we say we have that you're gonna see the nurse, you're gonna see a nurse. It's not like a private provider's office where they say you're gonna see the nurse and it's the person they trained in the practice. It's not somebody with a bachelor's degree in nursing, but they call them the nurse. That's what makes us different than private practice. We've always calculated our fees based on the Medicaid rate because we, we've always had that deep pocket of the county to go back or this Medicaid cost settlement to go back and relieve the pressure off of us for those services. What they're doing is they're basically taking that ability from the efficient counties to do that away. And our fees are going to go through the roof. Let me, let me, let me come at this from, another a, from a different <clears throat> way, maybe, because I'm, I'm really having a hard time getting my head around it. I know you're doing I'm not saying you're doing it wrong. I just don't understand it. Root canal therapy went from 409 to $869. Mm -hmm. What happens and how does it happen if we don't raise that to $869, we leave it right where it is, $409.30. If you, what happens to you in the health department? The next time I do a root canal, I don't get the cost of the bonnet. I only get what it costs, what we perceive the cost to be in Macon County for that service. Okay, and if, and words, if we charge $409.90, then that's what we perceive the cost to be? That's what we perceive the cost to be. But we were able to. But because I charge $869, but now I perceive the cost to be 869 so now I'm going to get some di matter of difference between 490 and 869 No. What we, yes. What we were able to do in the past was we were able to, to feed off of other counties whose rates were at 869 And we were able to generate our cost settlement and keep our costs lower in our community because we were smarter than the average county health department. I agree with that. And now we're having to do what everybody else does and drive our fees up to where they are in the private sector almost in a lot of cases in order to generate enough revenue to do that. We used to be able to offset with our Medicaid costs on what we got. So if I come to aggregate. you, if I come to you need a root canal, I'm going to, I'm going to pay, you build you're going to bill me $869. Yes, sir. Well, who's going to pay him or the Medicaid? Him, if he's, yeah, he's he's private pay. If he's okay. insured, which, which insured, but if I'm Medicaid, but if I'm Medicaid, I'm going to pay, the, the Medicaid's going to pay. Medicaid's going to reimburse me whatever Medicaid's ah, rate. So you, yeah. ah, I got it. Yeah. My bull just came. So I got Medicaid you. only reimburses me $498 at the end of the so year. So you need to make up the difference for people that aren't Medicaid. That's correct. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wonderful health care system. Yeah. 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 But I probably need to have the care What's that? Yeah, I know. Good. 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 I'm with you. Though. I got it. That makes sense. Mine, too. That makes sense. At the end of the year, No, not sure. No, no. At the end of the year. It's not your insurance that's going to go up. Oh, mine's not going to go up. No, mine doesn't get driven up by You're on a different plane. Oh. <laughs> but <laughs> all of us are in the same boat, I think, on that. But it, what it is is Medicaid at the end of the year will cost settle based on that $895 charge. Even if they only reimburse me today at 400 at the end of the year, they're paying that $800. I'm with you. I got you. It, 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 it's what I need to do. Right. I understand. I'm terrible. The, the, one, the one, one that I really that really bothers me to see the cost, I think, is going to because of a lot is the pre <coughs> uh exam and that double uh, I think that's one of them. Yeah. and those are predominantly Medicaid patients yeah well we don't but we were able to keep our fees low because other people did and now we're it's, we're going to pay the piper for that we're going to have to go up on our fees just like everybody else in order to generate that cost settlement at the end of the year and get paid for what we actually do because our costs included that two hundred fifty thousand dollars that we got last year. Actually, hundred. We I think we only budgeted about half of it as we're trying to do because we really don't know what it's going to be because it's very much service you provide that year. 
Yeah, we, we really don't have much choice. It's not a choice I think we would no. make, but we really don't have yeah. much choice. No, unless we want to increase the budget. I mean, that's where we are. Well, like I said, we really don't have much choice. Yeah. And, uh, it, Thing I'll is, is we'll be back next month with more because there's, I mean, oh, it's, fun. It's, there's constant change. Oh, good. And uh, I mean, we already know the Red Cross is going up on things. We don't have a four-hour attendance. Is all these month. tests that you have, these laboratory tests, uh, you cannot, you don't have the ability, Jim, I think, more or less know, to pick and choose what you do and what you don't do. <laughs> In some, not necessarily, yeah. We, we do in some cases. In some cases we do things within the community because we know that the cost in the community is significantly higher than we can get it for. Have you ever done a study of the numbers to see the ones that you got, you got a, you got a current expense for them and the ones that, that are certain very few people that we can eliminate? Have you um, done that study? We have looked at, we've eliminated a lot of lab fees. We a lot of, and, and we did it last year before the, not this program. You didn't have much year, money last year. No, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. But the problem is, is that there's, we do, I want to be careful how I say this, we do it significantly cheaper than Angel Medical Center. We don't even send, we send very few labs to Angel. We do all of our labs through a private company, uh, and, and they come and pick them up, and they deliver us the result on a, on a computer in our, in our lab. Um, so when it comes to some of the labs, and don't, I'm not the clinical person, but labs around some of the chemotherapy and some of the other things people do, it is significantly higher if they get it done through the hospital. You know, and the health department has always kind of been the safety net for those people that can't afford those hospital rates. Now, is that part of our assurance function? Not necessarily. But it's something that they've done in this community for a long time. Those labs are still going to be cheaper than what you get in the hospital. You know, I'm, I'm not sure, but, I, I, well, I am sure of this. I know that, like, Highlands Hospital, they have somebody come to picks up their samples. It's the same to, people we utilize. Okay. Yeah, it's the because, same company. Because we I happen to know somebody personally that, runs, that, that is a courier for them. And that's a bid out, sir. How we come along, we the county of asking you to start bidding these things out, out too, but how we work on how we start making progress on that. What do you mean, man? Well, we had, there was two or three items that we had talked about bidding now for, at the health department that was not coming through the regular bidding process through the county. It's still right where it was. Nothing has changed. So where are we at on that? We've got another discussion about it in quite a while. Uh, I don't know. I think the, uh, the, the issue was about uh, a company that provided both medical supplies and all the supplies. And I can't recall the name of the company. So it had nothing to do with the, the, no. the lab. Yeah, that no, no, no. This. This no. Well, it's actually, it was, everything we do, it, all of our costs, we, we do participate with a purchasing company. And that purchasing company does the bidding for us. They go out and they solicit the three bids. I think we directed to come through the county, did we not? I think we directed all that should come through the county, best of my recollection. Like every other department does. And does this lab, what I'm asking is just, does this lab come through the county? No, we don't bid that. No, no, you don't bid that. No, but should we? We don't. Yeah. We don't do no. that. No, we the, don't county, the county doesn't bid any of the stuff that we're doing through the health department currently. It doesn't. That goes back to the premier purchasing agreement. I want to make sure the county mayors. I'm sure it doesn't last. That's what I'm, I'm confused totally. Because I, I could have sworn that we said that we would certainly do that. But Am I right or wrong? Yeah. It was, my, it was my understanding, best I can remember. Um, I think we had that discussion at this at a meeting here on a Friday, and I was going to be going on vacation the next week. And I think you were going to meet with Jack, and y'all were going to discuss it and give us a directive. And I don't know what happened after that. Yeah, we're, to be quite we're honest, we're trying to get all principles together. Is what yeah, we're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, we, 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 I, I have not been involved in a meeting since okay. that. But just to answer uh, <coughs> your question, the lab thing are not a piece of that. Well, it's a totally different story. Yeah, yeah, it is. No, no, it is a piece of that. It, it's all everything we purchase. We are trying to purchase through Premier because we can get a better rate than we can through the county for the things that we're purchasing. Yeah, but I'm saying no other health uh, boards in the other counties, they all do this the same way. They don't go through their uh, county to, to all right. yeah. the the lab board. No, the, per the county has never purchased our medical supplies. And right. in, 
the reason, and it, and it all goes back to the purchasing agreement issue of who can sign a purchasing agreement, who can't right. within a county. Right. And another issue completely separate. Right. Um, but all of the, we do purchase a lot of stuff through the premier agreement that we have. And it's, it's lab supplies, it's medical supplies, it's our shredding contract. Um, we can get our, if we wanted to change, if we could do it and change our cell phone contract, I can get our cell phone contract 5% less than we paid with the county today. Um, we're trying to save a dollar, and that's the objective. It's not trying to skirt any system or any of the other things that people might perceive somewhere. Well, I mean, for example, Premier, they do uh, almost every county, they do all the lab, all the purchases. Well, La LabCorp does, right. but LabCorp is one of the three vendors that I can choose from through Premier. I can choose from any Premier, three Premier vendors. Premier is like a, is like a company that contracts and, and gets discounts. Buy. Yeah, you can buy straight from the company and pay a higher price. You can buy it through Premier and get the same product for less than what they're they selling. Right yeah. so and they basically, they've gone out negotiated price. rates. They negotiated right. rates. And, and it's yeah. the same. It's when we talk about purchasing through Premier. Premier is like joining Sam's Club. You're still buying from Del Monte. Yeah. We're still buying from General Medical. We're still buying from LabCorp. We're still buying from the same office supply company that you're buying office supplies from, right. except I'm getting okay. cheaper. Right, yeah. because you got the purchase Because I have the purchasing power of, <laughs> of 275 organizations, <coughs> okay. mostly hospitals. All right, thank you. Uh, I am 11 F's resolution uh, supporting addition of Burning Town Church Road as a fraction of a mile, a small fraction. <coughs> Turning that over to yeah, the state, the state, we were, anytime you had a, had a uh, secondary route to the state system, they want the county commission to pass a resolution asking ask them to take it over. Normally you do that, and then they come out and do an investigation, but we got a letter from the district there it is, engineer it is. who said he's already done that and does qualify for the state system, so he's asking the board to go ahead and pass a resolution, allowing them to add it to the state system. Yeah, absolutely. Or the church. Uh, so, so that's a part. Okay, that's, that's the... Uh, the last item we have on the consent agenda. Uh, do we have a motion to accept the agenda? As so, as well? so moved. We've got a motion. We have a second. Second. We've got a motion and a second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We die. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, I don't think we have any appointments, do we, gentlemen? If not, we'll go into closed session. Uh, for attorney-client privilege, and do we expect uh, to have any information coming out of this? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think there'll be any action. So good. You guys will see the smiles from friends right over here. They're happy about that. <laughs> and, and, uh, They're going home. We can't yet. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I won't recess when we come back out of the That's closed it. session. That's right. All right. Thank y'all. You need a motion, uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Do you get a motion? Yeah, we do need to make a motion. Oh, oh, there oh, you go. Oh, go Second. 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 Turn clock over. We got a second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Aye.